6.07. And that means I need to be more aware of where the agenda is. Um, uh, is everyone taking a look at the meeting minutes from December 12th? I have looked at those, I had no problem with them. So I would entertain a motion. Do you have any? Yes, sir. I looked at them, they look fine to me. Okay, make a motion to approve the minutes of December 12th, 2018 uh, meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, doing some uh, comments from the public on items that are not already listed on the agenda. I, I have something I'd like to say I okay. think it would be appropriate here, kind of from a, a public viewpoint. Uh, on uh, the Saturday before Christmas, our fire department, police department, and ambulance service uh, wished everybody a happy holidays. They made a tour of the town. Uh, they started, I think, at this building and ended up at the, at the uh, fire station, I think. Uh, started like at 4.30 and it went till 6.30 or 7. Uh, they had all four vehicles there, plus the two police cruisers and EMS was there. And Santa was in a sleigh, pulled on a trailer, enclosed trailer. Uh, I've heard positive feedback on it, it was great. Uh, I appreciate the efforts of our departments to, to do that. It was kind of a last minute thing, but I think that went over quite well. There was a robocall to announce that, plus other things going on. So if you missed it, I guess you'll, I don't know if it's on their site, police site anywhere yet or not, but uh, that was very well received. So uh, they're hoping to do it next year, maybe a little different time or schedule, but uh, that was a very good thing for the community, I think. I have to agree, they came by the house. It was, uh, it was pretty well done and uh, it was nice to see everybody out there at that time. Right. It's probably one of the few times you see all the equipment out that's yeah. not going to the emergency yeah. <laughs> situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I would add that it would be nice if it wasn't the last minute thing. Right. Because my guess is a lot of people would have missed it because they didn't yeah. know about it in advance. Like if it were yeah. in yeah. the we'll scoop, change. for example. We'll change, yeah. So that, I mean, because that's a perfect thing for the scoop for, because right. they've got all the other Christmas Eve related things around. So I feel bad the scoop. Yeah, they're looking at doing it again, and maybe during the daytime, when more we, people would see more of the of the of the parade going by. I Although guess. there was something about all the lights, you know, because they had all the lights going at the same time, so it was kind of impressive. But had you had a little more heads up time, and had the route been, oh yeah, you know, on you could have, like, printed the website, it was, it was something. Around. There was a round of time period, so people would I sit think. for two hours waiting for it to go by their house. Uh -huh. Yeah, there, and with, with, with time periods, I think they kind of stuck to that mostly. But So yeah, you're part of the, of the town. You wouldn't have to wait two hours for them to come by. It was, they said like 6.30 they'd be by. It was by. cold out there. Yeah, it was. Paul wasn't cold in a sleigh though. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. All right, well, let's uh, get started on our old business then. Um, we've got the police detail rate request. Now, I'll just kind of turn this over to Brian yep. at this point. Too. So at the last meeting, uh, Chief Savini was here requesting that uh, the board vote to uh, revise the police detail rate. Um, and he had a discussion with the board and he presented the board with this uh, information that he presented as 12 comparable communities. Um, and at that point, um, this request was made over the course of kind of an update on the police department, so it wasn't an item that was on the agenda for action. So right. we deferred it to this meeting. And his request is that, that the board would uh, vote essentially to keep the rate consistent with the Mass State Police, which currently is $50. Um, $50 here. Yeah. A lot of the towns are, Amherst is a little higher, but Hadley's no, a little higher. I, I think we're, we're losing control if you just leave it that way. I, I think we should be looking at it every year, even if it matches the same as the state police, I think. I'm not in favor of being automatic increase to match state police. I think we need to look at it every year. That's my feeling. And I think we did talk about that. That's what he was proposing at first. 
the average of this was 50, and then, then we got in discussion of should it just automatically match the state police record and uh, rate, and then I guess we left it at that. Uh, we left it. We didn't we decide. Didn't, we didn't take any action. We didn't take any action. don't go up there more often. I know, but yeah. I, I, just, I, I, I just think we should uh, do an average like he's proposing. Uh, and come to us every year if, if yeah. there's a need for a change rather than rate to state police. That's my okay. feeling on that. Yeah. No, I, was, um, I, I actually thought it was fairly reasonable to go with whatever the state police is doing. Um, and having been on the personnel committee now for a year, um, if you keep, like, every time you go and look at your employees and then go, well, what's the average? And then it, because all these things are moving targets right. and people are using that same kind of criteria to make the decision, then you've just kind of got a lot of random numbers that are randomly moving up. I think the state is slow enough on this sort of thing that, like for example, the state isn't the highest on this list. That's one of the, you know, the state is right. kind of right in the middle of these. Um, my understanding is this isn't really a matter of, I mean, what's different about it from the personnel committee is that uh, for the personnel committee, there's actually, like, we don't pay our employees uh, something reasonable. They might actually go and start working for some other town that pays better, yeah, right? right. Um, these rates apply, like, when the work's done in Waitley, right? Uh, so if the work's actually done somewhere else, it's whatever their rate is. If it happens to be a Waitley police officer in their off-duty time taking that shift from in some other town, you know, it's, it's not like they're going to not do a, a, I mean, anything that happens in Waitley is going to be at this rate. Now, I suppose you could run into the, um, the situation where it's hard to get, because we are, like, uh, tied for lowest here right. uh, on this. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. So I, I understand about wanting to keep an eye on it, but I, I, don't, I, this, I don't really object to going with the state police I, I guess either. The, the other thing I'm thinking of, we all know that the issue the state police has with overtime pay, detail rates, I guess. Uh, we the we governor, say we all know the issue? I don't understand what you mean. Well, you've been gone, but, but paying uh, overtime for state police uh, that wasn't legitimate. Right, but this isn't overtime, right? Well, this no, is but it, right. well, I think it's it's kind of related to detailed work. Well, it could be related to detailed work, and, and I could see, uh, I'm just speculating, a freeze on, on all state police hiring rates or, or yeah. pay rates. And, uh, that's well, why then, I, we, then we can change. Okay, well. Right. So, that, I think we can keep an eye on it and keep it at the state police rate. Um, so that it, you know, it stays near the middle without us having to, uh, uh, you know, spend two meetings on it. So I are we are we going to ask the chief to come every year and ask for the rate he wants, or are we just automatically? Well, if we if we were to go it? with his proposal, it says we go with the state police rate, then our rate would go up when theirs officially goes up, and we presumably we have to keep informed. So we might have to think of a way yeah. to make sure that we're informed about that every time the rate changes. But this doesn't come out of tax, well, of town tax money. No. Okay, this comes out right. of whoever it is that's requesting the working on the polls or whatever work that happens to require a police detail. Right, so this is not, it's not like we're, we're spending no, and uh, it's not directly the, related to our budget. The, 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 to our property tax money. In fact, it's, we're not even, spending state tax money it's whatever organization you know comcast verizon whoever it is who needs to block off traffic for whatever time to do the work so um to me that see that makes me feel like you know if, if our decision is always going to be to well let's raise ours to the average of the others that's where the police are anyway that's where the state police are anyway so it seemed like it wasn't an unreasonable thing that jim was asking for this year they are, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't feel that strongly about it either, though. I guess you want to prove it uh, uh, using the state police rate, uh, I, would, I would say, okay, fine, but I guess I would like to, I like to know that every year. 
Okay. Well, that's what, what the right. rate, rate okay. is. We don't act on it, but it's telling me he's raising a rate this year until whatever state police rate it, whatever. So. Yeah. But you I, think I would like to, to know the information. Sure we review that. Um, I'm not sure which of us is the police liaison person, or whether that would just be something we can look at every year. Just put it on the kind of put it on the calendar. We've for, been asking him to give us updates. Yeah. I mean, we're asking him to give us updates. Okay. Quarterly or yeah. at least twice a year now, so that. Okay. Can ask him we that can ask him. Yeah, you include that when when there's rate changes. Yeah. Okay. Do we need to make an official vote then? I think so. Okay. Um, would you like to make a motion or should sure. I? Well, okay, I'll make the motion that we approve the the Whiteley Police Detail Rate to uh, fifty dollars an hour for this coming year, which is the same as uh, as the Massachusetts State Police Rate, and which is what should be considered for future increases with that information provided to the board as, okay. as rates change. Okay, I would second that. Okay. So that, so just for clarification, that, so if the state police changed to 55 in two years, we automatically go to 55? Yeah, but, we, we, but we also motion. get, and we, but we get informed. Okay. Get informed. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the time, if we if we feel there's something to to take a look at, we can do that. Okay. Gainesville um, Road reconstruction project. We should probably vote. Okay. Is it both? Oh, I'm sorry. We vote. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Yes. One abstention. <laughs> One abstention. <laughs> Okay, to Odell. And the uh, Road Reconstruction Project. Road Reconstruction Project. Do I hand it over to John now? What's that? No, you're doing a great job. Oh, okay, all right. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, I want to provide an update on the Haydenville Road Reconstruction Project for those watching and also bring it back to what the board received from um, Hoyle and Tanner. So this is a project to reconstruct Haydenville Road from the Williamsburg town line uh, to a point just beyond the intersection of Masterson Road. And that would be um, milling and repaving of that section. And then there'll be about another 1,100 foot section going towards um, going towards Chestnut Plain Road. That would be um, guardrail improvements in that part. Um, so this is being funded by, it was money that was earmarked in a transportation bond bill a long time ago. Yeah. Was a, I think it might have even been before 2014, but it may have been 2014. Um, so the goals of the project are uh, pavement surface rehabilitation, improved bicycle accommodation, guardrails, signage and pavement marking improvements, water quality improvements, um, and localized road safety improvements. Much of the water quality improvements would be around and in the vicinity of the Mountain Street Reservoir. Um, oh, Northampton is okay. very concerned about uh, the water quality in that reservoir for obvious reasons. Um, initial study for the roadway was done to see if it could be widened. Currently, it ranges from 23 to 26 and a half feet. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of environmental constraints um, along that part of the roadway. Um, there's wetlands along most of it, and there's some ledge and some topography issues. Um, so this is really, really early on in the project. Let's see, we have a set of um, environmental coordination plans. So if we're looking at uh, a percentage, this project is about, I'll say 1% design. It's, it's it's just getting started. Um, so the next step, um, the next step is further design of the project. They'll identify what the environmental impacts will be to the um, to the adjacent wetlands and you know, continue with the design. And part of this project also goes. Part of it also goes into Williamsburg as well, continues to Williamsburg. Um, so it's a, uh, 
regional project in a sense, or a two-town project in a sense. We had our first meeting about that. Oh my God, I was on the board even. <laughs> I think you were. I think it was like one of my first years on the board. Yeah, yeah. been a long time <laughs> coming. But these, these plans show it ending at, at Waitley Town Line. Is, you say it goes into Williamsburg? Yeah. How, is that a major portion in Williamsburg as well? I believe so. But yeah. they're not talking about the entire road yet. Just a Waitley portion is all we're doing right well, now? What you have, what's presented to the town of Waitley is just the town of Waitley. Well, right, I understand that, but it's... But the project encompasses X miles into Waitley and Y miles into Haydenville as a buffer to their reservoir footprint. Yeah. Right. And at one point we were talking about just doing the whole thing as opposed to peace. All the way to the center. Well. All the way to, all the way to our center and all the way to Route 9. Yeah. That's and I guess that's not happening. That's not under discussion or I believe part of part of the roadway from from Chestnut Plain Road to Masters and what I think was done in for resurfaced in the meantime. Yeah, it was just resurfaced, right. right. but it wasn't wide. No, 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 it wasn't it was wide. dug up and filled. And yeah. Right, but it wasn't it wasn't widened. Yeah, I don't think there's any plans. I don't think you can. I don't think you're widening it. The well, they talked about it. Yeah, a little bit. I think. Uh, in here? I thought so. Well, why are you paying it, but not, you're not widening bad lanes or anything. Oh, not bad no, lanes. They're, they're proposing no. it 24 feet. 24 feet, yeah. Okay. Which I, I think the, oh, okay. the a little, little one. Yeah. And again, this is, this is based upon what was discussed a long time ago now at this point. Yeah. What are the bike accommodations you spoke about? Well, what they're eventually going to do is it's just going to be shared use accommodations. So markings they're going to the they're going to put markings on the road that say bike lane. Watch out for uh, it won't even be a bike lane. It'll there's these markings they call them sharrows, yeah. and it's arrows with the bicycle, and it lets people know that there's yeah. bicyclists in the road. Yeah. The widening of the road based on based on this preliminary report is just not feasible with. Yeah. The wetlands so close and well, the right. 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 Yeah, they're they're not. I don't think they're that impressive. These sharrows. No. They have them on Route 10 going from Northampton to East Hampton. On that that stretch there. Uh, yeah, it's not really like having a bike lane, and but it only costs you whatever paint costs, right? It's, yeah. it's a pretty well traveled bike path. Oh, yeah. constant. Which is great. During, during the summer. Put yeah. up an ice cream shop in the middle of Haydenville Road and you're going to make a fortune. You might have a zoning issue. Details. Change of use. It's a put a creamy in the Okay, so what are, so what are they asking? Are they asking us for comments on this? Brian, what, what is, did you just our information? Yeah, yeah Keith, uh, Keith uh, submitted some, Keith reviewed it and submitted his comments. Most of them were minor in nature. Yeah. Um, it's what, he anticipated would be done so was the environmental constraints. And I'm, I apologize if I didn't hear this and you said it. This is a bond issue that went into the, the, the governor's bond bill a couple of years ago. Has it been released? Yep. It has been. The money has been released. Oh, okay. The, the money uh, portion of it has been released for this design work. This. When I, when, I, when I first started here, probably two and a half years ago, we had meetings with Steve Kulik, um, some Mass DOT folks, and Charlene Nardi, and the highway superintendent in Williamsburg, and Keith, and we were still trying to convince Mass DOT to release the money. Um, right. And the most we could get out of them was to release money for the design. But the That's money right. that was earmarked in the bond bill was around, I believe it was around $4 million. But that there's a transportation bond bill, and then there's Mass DOT capital improvement plan. And capital improvement plan is what they go by. It doesn't always match up with what was in the bond bill, so money gets shifted. That's a nice way to put it. But we've also talked about putting this on the tip. Yeah. I think it may be the construction of it still is on the tip. Okay. But that's 2020. I think it was three, something like that. Yes. There's a way until you get designed for Yeah, and as soon as it's built, you know what we have to do? Start all over again. It's going to take another 15 years to, or 20 years or whatever to get it. Don't get me started. Yes. 
No, I'm glad Keith made some comments. Okay. Yeah. That's good. It was released. I like that. Okay. Um, okay. We're looking at a uh, hazardous mitigation planning contract with the FERCOG. Yeah. So this Town of Whateley multi hazard mitigation plan uh, was done in 2015, expires in 2018. And this is. Oh, it's like the yeah. Uh, let's see, none of. Nope, you guys weren't part of it. Alan Sanderson was the representative for the select board. What year was that? It was before my time. This said 2015. Well, this letter was 2015 to Mark. Alan was not on the board in 2015. Or 14. Maybe they didn't change the front page. <laughs> I would have put that. Alan hasn't been on the board since 2008. Eight ish? Eight. Yeah. Eight. It looks like the plan was originally drafted in 2005. Yeah, that would make sense. In 15, and then they didn't change the front page, probably. Good. So we're, who was on it for the select board? In five? 15, no, 15, in In 15, yeah. me, Joyce, Paul, probably. and Paul. Yeah, I don't know who, but I don't know which of us was on that. No, Fred was on it, was in on 15. Fred. It was no, me, me, oh, me okay. Paul, and Fred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not me though. It's not my fault. So the plan's about to expire. It's a, having a up-to-date hazard mitigation plan is a prerequisite to getting pre-disaster mitigation grants and hazard mitigation grants from FEMA. One of those how we used to fund the Mill River Bank Stabilization Project. So it's worthwhile having um, an updated plan. And MEMA, FEMA through MEMA, um, gives you the funds to update your plan. So, if you recall, we received a small grant of $9,000 from MEMA. We were notified that of well, that grant at the end of November, and we signed the agreement. So, in the past, the money has gone directly to um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. There was some change recently that I think with, the, with FEMA as to how MEMA has to give the money directly to the towns who then have to do this um, what's called a micro purchasing procurement process uh, to obtain a consultant so uh, we've gone through that and we have a, a contract for FERCOG um, for up to nine thousand dollars to help us with uh, renewing this plan there's a group of about eight to ten towns that are doing it this round together a lot of the information in here is regional in nature, so yeah. there's efficiency to in doing it together. So, and we're providing in kind match for 25 percent. We're providing in kind match of, of yep of three thousand dollars. How how are we monitoring that, or how are we doing that? Uh, we'll have to track that. So when we submitted the grant, we um, we'll have to track hours so we can we get a a certain rate for volunteer hours. Okay. So. We will assume that the committee will put in and will track the amount of hours that the committee puts in oh, yeah. to reviewing the plan and attending the, the local committee meetings um, to equal the three thousand oh, dollars. Okay, so only three thousand cash. It's not three thousand cash. And which committee is it? Which town committee is it that is? It's the committee that we need to create. Oh, another com. I didn't see that on the agenda. Well, we have it. It talks have about it. a committee, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. You know, that's, see, that is why I was curious. We have to get the thing first. Okay. We need to. There's no reason to delay um, this grant. No, we should sign this. We should sign contract. this, yeah. Yeah. this yeah. contract. And, and then. We need to. And then. Yep. What's this committee going to be called? Last time it was called the Waitley Multi Hazard Mitigation Plan Committee. Is there two? So local hazard mitigation plan committee. Last time it was Keith. Well, I don't know. Maybe this was 2005, but most of these people are still here. Keith Bardwell. Got to look at the quick and a few more pages. Gary Stone, John Hanna. Well, this is Alan Sanderson, but so for the select board. I can appoint him. Sabine. Sure. You guys okay with that? What? We should appoint Alan Sanderson again. Wouldn't yeah. that just be? Lynn Sibley, emergency management director. Well, isn't Alan involved in emergency in management today, though, isn't he? Is he director or assistant to Lynn? One of the two, right? He's the assistant to Lynn. Yeah. So I think 
So I figured we could, it doesn't have to be at this meeting, but okay. we'll, have, we'll have the typical highway, so, fire, police. You're right. We'll ask Lynn as the EMD. Yeah, the usual suspects. Why don't you put together a, a list of likely suspects yeah. for our next meeting? Have any volunteers? Does it have to from have the select from, board? From our Does it have to have a group? group? I don't think there's any requirement that it have anybody from the select board. I'm, I'm not opposed, but I don't have yeah, any I mean, skill set. Yeah, I don't have a lot of expertise to land. I mean, I would learn a lot, I'm sure. Um, yeah. I don't think the what I don't think the lift up will be too heavy, yeah. Because um, it's it's really just an update to the existing plan. Um, but okay. quite honestly, we have an income match of three thousand dollars, and the more people that participate, the quicker we make our match, right? <laughs> that's, that's how the math works, I think. Uh, if you need a volunteer, Amy will be on it. Yeah. If hey, you need a volunteer, I'm, I'm happy to do it, especially in light of the MVP aspect of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, if they're gonna have daytime meetings, that's where I'm in trouble because I can very seldom make a daytime meeting. Okay. okay. So you'll put together a list of yeah. Okay. The committee. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a revised uh, frontier capital plan request. Yeah, so yeah, let me just say this is. I think uh, proposed uh, the subcommittee is proposed final plan going to the school committee, Frontier Regional School Committee, sometime this month. Uh, and what it shows is is borrowing of 1.8 million dollars, 1.826 million, uh, to cover projects listed here. And then there's also other projects that are going to be funded by their E and D. Account, which is in their budget uh, to fund the ones that they feel are, are more of a maintenance a deferred maintenance type of activity uh, the bigger projects are going to be funded with, with borrowing in the beginning first couple of years uh, as you can see there, there's an oversight item for that to, to manage the, the co contracts and, and that may also include looking at other sources of funds, uh, grant funds or, or green communities for some of the energy improvements. So that's yet to be determined. Am I reading this correctly that the oversight dollars for are, is that? They're all up, they're not all up front, but Is that 17,320 or 117,320? No, no. No, it's the 53. Where for is the oversight? That's the debt service, the, the, the next line after that. 53, 464. Where? Oh, down here, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I got you, okay. All right, it's, I was, I was it's the oversight more in the first year is because more projects are uh, yeah. supposedly going to be implemented. So. Yeah. Uh, and you can see the, the impact on us for 10 years is. The average is like 24,000 on the average and so. And that may change a little depending on our percentage of Frontier's budget. That's the current one. That can vary, yeah. Yeah, Right. And the tax rate increase was, they're estimating at eight cents. Uh, and I guess our, our finance committee was involved. Paul has been aware of what's going on here for the last several months. And, he was at one of the subcommittee meetings and some of his, his members were there also, so. Uh, what do you think of this, Paul? Well, I think that um, it's certainly a necessary endeavor. Um, I think much of it is as a result of <clears throat> not placing these items in budgets in years past and allowing issues and deterioration of the school to occur. And if you recall, the increases from Frontier over the past few years have been terrific from our perspective. In terms of the cost savings. Right, right, very low. Paying wise to town foolish perhaps. Possibly. Right. So that's part of this. Um, but then you have some real high-end capital issues like the track 
like the um, HVAC. Those things have been going on for far too long. And from my perspective, when I look at the piece of the pie that we're going to be required to pay, I think I think it's a it's a good investment. Um, for our kids. Um, can I ask a question about the track? Having just come from a CPC meeting, mm -hmm. um, they are curious about numbers for the request that they have. Are they going to get those by February 1st? What numbers are they? They're looking for budget numbers in terms of what the money, what CPA money is going to be spent on to fund our They're portion of the track. Requested. What's that? At this point, requested. It is requested, but they need specificity. Right. We, we submitted a place, I submitted a placeholder application yeah. right. for this project to keep open the opportunity that maybe CPA money could be available, could be spent for the track. I think they're very open to that opportunity, and so anything that they can do to help us keep our eight cents on the, on the, on the thousand low, I think we should do that. And if that, and, and, but that means that we have three weeks to get the number to get the numbers and the narrative finalized well we can still contribute uh, our 21,000 every year of CPA money for the for the I guess you could call it the track it, it's not going to be or it could be a separate project I, I guess but uh, didn't they say they're going to have their own oversight for the track? Right, right. But if you, if you look at our share of the, the track, if you want to fund our share completely, I, I mean, our share one time for the track, you're looking at six seventy thousand dollars. Eleven, twelve percent of of six hundred thousand is what? Yeah. I, the I track is six hundred thousand dollars. Yes, yes. The, the top line item is the track. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how CPC. One year. I, well, I don't know how CPC is going to view that, CPA, our CPA committee, whether they want to spend well, the, 70 the, the, some yeah. thousand in one year. The other option is, you know, you could do it like it is here, the 21, 26, or 28,000 every year of CPA money. Yeah, we could do that. It, it's whatever CPA we want, to, we want to spend on. It's not going to be a four-town CPA managed right. project. Right. That's right. not going to happen because we don't know can, what each town is going to do. Right. Each mm -hmm. town can decide whether they're right. doing that particular bit with their CPA or right. not. And and I don't. I guess it's interesting to think that oh, you you do less borrowing. Like if Whitley paid all of theirs up front, then you end up doing less borrowing, maybe less borrowing cost on that particular. Yeah. Well, thing. but we don't. Have to but but you don't have to. You could also say to the CPC, well. Here we'd like to do twenty-one thousand over the next five years, or, or that's, that's a lot more than seventy thousand dollars our share, right? Because it's got interest included. Right, that, that's an option, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so but but what John and Eddie is saying is they need those numbers in the next three weeks, right? And well, and I don't know if we really make that decision, but we can certainly put the we can certainly make make our opinions known for as citizens at a CPC meeting. But maybe this subcommittee will, uh, or you as a, our member on that subcommittee would have a recommendation as to which way uh, would work better. We're not saying now each town should fund it. Oh, no, no, no. Which way would, like when we go to the CPC, should we say, can you give us one lump sum up front, or could you give us these sums up front? I don't think we have the cash to give us one lump sum up front. I, I no, no idea, yeah. actually. So. But I, I, I'm, I'm missing something. Our share is how much of the track? Well, it's, it's going to be at seventy-two thousand without debt. Right, without debt. Right, without debt. Right. So, if you borrow at three percent, whatever we're getting these days, and I bet we can get three percent, we're going to be well shy of twenty thousand dollars over five each over five years. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That might have been round numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but it, yeah, I, I, I think that. Six, because they, 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 they add in all these all the projects that are going with the track so I, I think I mean that's a big number yeah and and I think that we as a town should be I, I mean it, it's probably isn't, smaller, why isn't it, it's probably smaller than 20,000 right why isn't it oh, up yeah, to us sure. to say we are going to submit this I mean because the placeholder that Brian put in was under wreck 
which yeah. fine, well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't see. I, see, I don't see any problem. We just have to figure out what the right number. We just is. need the numbers, and the school needs to give us yeah. the numbers, right? But I think these three people are not the right ones to figure out. What's I, the right I still don't know. What, what do you ask? What number are you asking the school to give you for one year or for the total of the track? For the bonding on the track. Well, the bond is going to be the the for the length the, of time of the bond. The twelve percent. Well, that's going to be done in a, in a first year or two, and that some of that will be paid back with the, with. The, with the bar, with with uh, each town's payment every year. Brian, can I ask you to put numbers, the, the num put the number in the placeholder for the yeah. CPC? Yeah. You'll, you'll be able to figure out what. Joe McCarrion would be the one to talk to on that. He's yeah. doing yeah, well, we, yeah, it's still going to come down to how, do, you know, do you fund it one year or do you do it over, I, how many years do we want to do it over the life of the bond? Do it over the life of the bond and we just fund our portion of the bond that way as opposed exactly. to going to the finance committee. Okay, and are you looking at are you looking at the limits that are set here for for the total borrowing, or are you going to have CP C funds plus right borrowing plus borrowing plus borrowing? Yeah. Right. Well, plus no. If you're say you're only going to borrow twenty twenty thousand for six years, our share here is twenty one twenty six twenty six thousand. So you have to come up with the with the difference. Not just for the track though. No, for right. the total. Right. So right. CPC would only cover the track expense. Yeah. Right. And then we and take cover the rest. And then it's just a net, it's simple math. Yeah. And it, it, roughly it should be half, right? Because the track is about half of that total. Um, well, six of 1.8, 600,000 of 1.8, so. I was sorry, I was looking at the 1.17 third. The subtotal spending uh, for year one. The total could spending. The oversight year one. in there. Yeah. I think we're just making this a lot more complicated than it really is. We could, we could just appropriate, if the CPC was loan, we could appropriate a certain amount of funds each year. Yeah. yeah. And if, right. it's, if it's less than that, or even if it's more than that, it's... But it should be, we, we should know exactly what the debt service and principal is annually on the track. We should have a pretty close. Right. Get it pretty close. So, and then, and then, then we just... Yeah. net that out of our total debt service. The, the one caveat is that we need to have an item on town, an article on town meeting in the event that CPC doesn't pass the track, we would need to have a backup. A backup. But there, I'd be shocked if they I'd don't pass shocked. it. Yeah. They didn't go for that. Well, right. They, they do show the interest here on the track. If you look at the bottom here, yeah. you look at each year at 15,000, 14, 12, 11, 10. That's what yeah. you're paying down. Okay, well, okay, then, so then that's so fine. So if you want to add so all the Brian 10 years. Be able to okay, yeah. yeah, Brian has a calculator. I do, I just used it. Hey, yeah. All of my batteries. So, uh, so can, we, can we make that a priority? Yeah, okay. And if you want to keep it under rec, that's fine. And I'll work with you on it however I need to, if I need to. Yeah, I don't think it could go. It can't fit under the other ones. Yeah. No, it, it can't. So that's fine. But it probably will probably need approval of the rec committee. But how many how many years are you looking at of using CPC funds? In? As long as we can. Ten years. As long as the bond. Like this is going up. Yeah. Is it a ten-year bond? For Yes, so yeah, well, I guess yeah, 10 years. years but, but if the track is going to be done in the first year or two, do we still want to keep paying? No. Yeah. Well, he, well, yeah. It's, it's, why? It's, well, it's, so well, you don't have to take it all along. Yeah, you don't have to. Right. Yeah, you're Just paying the house is finished. And you're not paying off portions of the, the bond. It's a lump sum bond still. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You want those big things done right away yeah. on time. Right. You don't want them stretched out. Right. Because you pay for them over time. Right. Right. Okay, so you can get those. And I will schedule a meeting with the rec committee to formally vote this and get minutes. Okay. All right. On a related topic for the they also want the same for the Vets Memorial. For the Veterans Memorial. Yeah, they, they want they classify it as a recreation. Serious? Yeah. Who's they? C B C. Oh, I think that didn't come up today. So we'll have to we can chat offline about that. Okay. But I don't I don't have numbers for that one either. Yeah. Because 
Yeah, yeah I, I think the committee's met for a while. I don't think they're in trouble for the things they have to put 5% into. No, because they haven't funded their rec in quite a while. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Not, and that's not their doing. That's the rec that's just been remiss on this. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have 11 items of new business and 11 minutes left to the meeting. Perfect. We do this. Just. Not a bit of a pen ready. Okay. Uh, first item, Rick Adamchek is animal control officer. He just, just needs to sign on that. If you, if you appoint him, of course. Um, I would move that we appoint Rick Adamchek the most awesome animal control officer we've ever had, again, for 2019. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We do not have to do roll call votes. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. No, you don't have to do roll call votes, but but uh, I think I think that one passed. Um, think about this one carefully. This one, uh, there's, a, there's a new girl in town, Amy Schrader for the Board of Registrars of Voters. Do we have um, a CV or credentials of any kind? <laughs> Probably on my computer. Is she registered to vote? I am. Okay. She has a new tractor. <laughs> Okay. It's all announced, really. And, and she responds to my emails. All right, I'll make a motion. A second. Uh, all in favor? All right. Uh, Congratulations. All right. Justin Davis to the Red Commission. Um, I uh, let J John, you're closest to Red Commission. Yes. You have any words to say about that? Um, I asked him the other day if he was interested, and he said yes. Let's do it then. Let's, we're, we're good. I nominate so, so uh, Justin is, Davis to the Red Commission. What's your question? Uh, second, it, is, is he the seventh or eighth? He's the eighth. 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 We have seven already. Oh, because you added two. No, we, we added two seats. Seats. Nine seats. But haven't added the people. For oh, we haven't added the people. Who's the seventh one you added? We have me. We have Megan Wenzel. We have Megan Ashman. We have Tom Sadowski. We have Andy Mahalik. We have Chris Grosky. And we have. Um, uh, Mrs. H. That's seven. Oh, okay. So he's eight. He's eight. Okay. 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 Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. These, these votes are going pretty quickly. Uh, Kathleen Grady to fill the vacancy on the Board of Assessors. My understanding is the assessors have recommended. Right. Uh, yes. Kathleen um, Foreal has submitted a resignation a second time from the Board of Assessors. Oh, okay. And we thank her for her service. Yes, and um, they have, uh, the Board of Assessors says request that the Board appoint Kathleen Grady to fill the vacancy on the Board of Assessors for the remaining term. Okay. Or until the next election, which I think is the same thing. Right. And which is a half a year from now, right? Right. So uh, I would nominate uh, Kathleen Grady to fill the Board of Assessors vacancy. Second. Yep. Good. All in favor? Good. All right. Sounds like we're good. Okay. Uh, we need a voting delegate at the MIIA annual meeting, which is, I think, the January 18th and 19th. Correct. Oh, I, got. Uh, I cannot go, so. I'm going to be there. Um, so, yeah. Fred and I will be there as well. We've got Brian in the past, I yeah. guess. Yes. You guys okay with Brian? Brian's and holds up the sure. card. Sure. Who gets to hold up the card? I don't care. Yeah. I, mean, I, I should not be because I might go to the lunch. I might not go to the lunch. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll nominate Brian. I will go to the lunch. Um, for uh, for our voting delegate at the annual meeting. I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Brian, I, I have a request, though. I want you to vote no on one of the things just to see what happens. <laughs> Whatever you guys vote on, I'll do it. Be the minority. I want to see what happens if someone actually says no on any of these things because it never, it's like, anyway. That's because of my lunch. <laughs> next year, next year we're not allowed. Yeah, not allowed they they won't invite us. Yeah, they won't. Not allowed what? They won't, but they won't invite us to the lunch next year. <laughs> exactly, oh, yeah. Right. Where should your lunch invitation go? All right. Okay, uh, we need to discuss and vote on whether to support the FERCOG request for community compact support for the regional accounting program. Yeah. So here's I remember reading about in your email. Yeah, here's here's the situation. FERCOC has a regional accounting program of which we're a part of and they had a part-time accountant who was also 
our part-time accountant who retired. Um, so we don't have a, an assigned accountant currently. Um, there's other accountants who are going to be filling in as needed, but we don't have an assigned one. And they're having a really hard time filling the position. It's part-time, it's not benefited um, so they're having a hard time filling the position. What they've, what they've, I guess, arranged with the Department of Local Services is that if the, participate, the communities participating in the regional accounting program could submit a community compact best practice for, I don't remember what it exactly is, but it's for, for this program, fin um, finances. And the grant would do two things. It would allow for COG, at least for the duration of the grant, and I'm not sure if it's one year or three years, but it would allow them to fill the part-time position with a full-time person. It would pay for the benefits and, and salary. And it would also start a regional accountant or a, a training program for municipal accountants. And that would that would take place at FERCOG. That's one of the items that's been identified statewide as there's a, there's a lack of uh, municipal finance people. Uh, there just there just aren't a lot of them around. Because it doesn't pay anything. It's not worth their while. Right. right. So people yeah. stay in the private sector. Um, so and, and this is we're supporting them requesting somebody else pay for all that. So they're not asking us to pay for it right now. Right. They are asking us to submit a community compact uh, application that identifies the financial best practices yeah my, con my concern is that it, it's also paying for a, a one FTE with benefits in year one what happens in year two yeah you said yeah what yeah what? that's I feel the same yeah. way right I don't want to be on the hook for it in year two necessarily if it's an exorbitant amount well, of money. we pay for the for the for the amount of hours that the account works here and it's he worked he worked here one day a week Right, and so that wouldn't change. In right. theory, that wouldn't change, but I worry that all of a sudden. Year two, yeah, that's a question. So, isn't there, and maybe I'm just naive, you would think there would be some kind of a firm that has people on their staff that do this. So we hire a McKin the McKinsey of. Well, they're off. Frontiers got a Frontiers hired one for when Patty and your daddy left. A firm, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, I don't understand why we don't do the same thing. State wants to grow. I suspect. Okay. I, I suspect that's It'd a be more much expensive, more expensive, but I don't know. Would it be much more expensive? Well, because they're paying the person, may possibly more, but certainly it's a benefited position at a private company. So yeah, they're gonna to have to charge you, and, and we're paying the benefits. Right, but no, they're paying the benefits still. Well, but we're paying them we're the paying money them directly so that they can right on top of right. Right. But I'm wondering because economy is a skill kick in. I don't know. I'm just wondering whether it's worth sniffing around at least. I don't, I don't know. Well, when, when the, uh, if you win a consultant, they have their, their profit margin. They're not gonna add on top of that. I, I get that. Yeah. Whereas right. Frontier maybe does. I mean, I mean, Furcog doesn't add that or a smaller portion. Well, yeah, because Furcock yeah, certainly has them in on, top, uh, on the top. They have to. They have to make money, too. Right, but it may not be as much as going with a contract, contractor. Right, so. but, but they don't have anything to provide us right now. That's my, that's my concern. We're sort of stuck. It sounds like a good yeah. building, you know, where it morphs into new positions. That's my concern. That's, that's what these things do. Is it the one we, we have now, the one day a week, is he full-time? No, he was part-time. Part-time. So if they go full-time like this, who's going to use that person? I don't know. To support the full-time position? I, the, it would just increase our billable hour for the day he works here. Right, that's my guess. It, it, let's say it was X an hour. It's going to be X plus Y an right. hour. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be more expensive. I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah. It, so again, I don't see why we wouldn't at least do due diligence on options. 
What did we have before? We had for a cock here. Who was doing it? That was the. That, that's that's Larry Frank. What is his name? What was his name? No, because he was a fur car guy that was here once a week. Just oh, now, we just left. Ray? Yeah, but I mean, Ray. before that, who did you have before that? Before that. Oh, I think it's always been fur car. Here. As, as far as long it? as I can remember, but you know, my, don't trust my memory. We've always had our own treasure collector, da 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 da. But right. I think it's the accountant. Is always the accountant been. was always like a one day a week. Okay. Yeah. A person from fur car. Okay. Right. Yeah. But but it, it it's. It's not good that we, we don't have We should probably memory. check with our institutional memory, a.k.a. But what, what are the, they asking us to support this now? The does it, yeah, position? does this have to happen right away? Um, yeah, I think he was looking for the support as soon as possible. And if we were to support it and then not be in their program for both years, we're not committing to be in the program. We're just supporting them trying to get money to do this. For we this, we for can this. also simultaneously look at other options. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So we're not committing to a person at this point. Right. We're committing to helping them get some money to. We're committing to helping them get some money from from DLS. Right. To, to fill the gap for this year, but the the concern remains whether whether costs will remain the same as they have been in the past for our time not benefited. The but we don't have to worry about that at this point in time. Right. What are we doing at this point in time? This, we don't um, have it to set. We're right. scrambling. We're scrambling because the FERCOD lost the, the great guy. We they have, have a, they have a, they, I think they have two accountants on staff, but they weren't, they were assigned to other towns, so they'll be filling in when we need them to do certain things. Um, but in terms of processing the warrants and stuff like that, there was another person from FERCOD, uh, Catherine, Kathleen, Catherine. Um, to do those types of things but there's only there's certain tasks that only Tom County is allowed to do okay so I'd make a motion to um, support the fur request for community compact uh, program for a regional count uh, initiative for a regional pro accounting program a second and we would we most likely we would be submitting community compact request along with the fur as long as we're not committing to we're not committed yeah. to anything we're committed. That's, other than that's helping the end them out. of our commitment would be that's the end of our commitment right yeah. okay okay joyce do you have all favor? favor yeah all right yep okay each Good. each year we sign a oh, we sign an agreement at the beginning of the fiscal year for the accounting program so okay it would expire at the end of june okay uh this is another uh discussed on whether to support something uh, to support uh, an efficiency and regionalization grant application to analyze the cost and benefits of a shared human resource administrator. And I understand this is kind of coming out of Conway. Yeah. Yeah. This has been kicked around for a little while, at least since I've been here, between the, uh, the four towns and the four, really the four town administrators in the school. And this is another part of, this is a different part of the community compact program, it's efficiency and regionalization grant, which funds studies that would improve efficiency or regionalization, go figure. And what Conway is proposing is that there would be, there would be a, a feasibility study done with the, the frontier towns in the school to see if we could get, um, or see if it would make sense to have a, a person an employee, maybe probably within the school district, that could serve that HR function for all of the four towns. Because right now, it's the HR function is kind of piecemeal between the treasurer, collector, town clerk, town administrators, <coughs> yeah. and it's also piecemeal between the town here and the school district. Um, right? Yeah. Who does the school's HR right now? Do they have an HR person? Well, Patty used to do it as the business manager. Yeah. So. But not a trained HR person, right? No. Has there been problems? Um, What's the need? No, there has not been problems. Um, Although, if you ask certain people from Conway, mm -hmm. they might disagree right. and say there have been problems. I could, I could say, for for Waitley, as far as I know, there has not been any problems. Um, well, if Conway is generating. In interest in asking us to 
Pomponia that they need to sell it a little better they're, than just a request. So they're asking us to, to support their grant application. Yeah, so they're, not asking us they're not asking us for money. It's the same thing as the, so it takes less than yeah. the Burkhoff thing. So, but I'm, what, I mean, data is good. Yeah, but I, I mean, and it could show, to show that this is unfeasible. This is not really necessary, or, given right, okay. or it's not necessary. Uh, the FERCOG did a. Um, it didn't. Um, it didn't amount to a feasibility study, but they did a survey of towns and HR functions, and Lynn and I discussed it, and we we don't have a high. We don't have a a large enough volume of work that a HR person could do, but it would be helpful if we had an HR question to be able to call somebody and say, hey, this, you know, this is our problem. You know, yeah. what's the solution without spending three hours trying to look up? Okay. Well, I think we should support the, the grant application and yeah, it would yeah. just be the phys feasibility study. See what it says, see what data they come back with and then make it, you know, yeah. see what. Is that, yeah, I don't feel like it's a foregone conclusion that uh, there's enough work for an HR person for with four small town governments and four elementary schools and not a school. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's not necessarily clear to me that there's uh, a way for one person to do all that. Um, anyway, like it, it almost yeah, you think of all of that hiring and, and you know day to day stuff. That seems like oh my man, that's a really big job for somebody now. But right now it's already it's distributed in a way that's pretty efficient for the most part. Yeah. So, so it'd be right interesting to see what a study would say um, uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, that being said, it, is, it, it does raise the question, if someone had a complaint uh -huh. in wait, who would they go to? Who is qualified to address that issue? I don't think, they, I don't think we have anyone like that. And for, we've been fortunate. We haven't needed one that I know of. Well, I mean, if you have an employee that has a problem, a real problem, and you guys can't answer it, what do they do? I think talking about that sort of thing. I think if, they, if an employee was feeling like they were being discriminated against or so that what they sort do of thing, is they yeah. go and they see an attorney. Yeah. That's what they do. Right. And then the attorney guides them in the process. Though, I, Paul, I think you're right, but you can make a strong argument that perhaps an HR professional would nip that in the bud so it would not have to go down a legal path where it could be resolved at the town level. I, I don't know, I'm just, because every time lawyers get involved, dollars get involved. Sure. But don't don't yeah. we have contacts at the state that would answer some of our questions on these kind of issues that come up? Well, but it might take three hours to find that answer. Well, so the, what? The, the personnel guess. policy contain the, it includes the, the process for, for grievances. Right. Um, and I'm sure the, the, the teacher's contracts have that process for grievances. Yeah. So. Okay, well, okay. this is all stuff that we can find out. Yeah. Okay. And I would suggest the caveat that we do not include UMass in the study. I second that. Oh, don't let UMass do the study? Is, 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 oh. <laughs> are you, are you, are you forecasting or do you know something that they would absolutely go to UMass? It, they go to the lowest bidder, which is always UMass and it killed us last time. Right, but you don't have to go to the lowest bidder as long as you have. I'm just saying, Yeah. make a suggestion, yeah. UMass is out. Uh, can we say that? That was not a great experience with that regional, yeah. no. regional study that oh, never yeah. happened. No, but I'm not sure that the, can't challenges lay yeah. squarely solely at the feet of UMass. I think that it was managed not in the best way as well by. Right. Sure. Well, I mean, is is that something we really want to add to the vote? No, but we right can. At this point, we just. But we, yeah. we can we can let our friends know that that's. Yeah, let's we'll see what they come up with first okay. before they advertise it for a safe we'll position. See if they get money. Yeah. I actually think that it would be a good idea to see um, see the application before it's submitted. I think we, we, we should be able to request yeah. that because our name is on it. 
and that means our brand is on it and our reputation's on it. And so to ask to see it before it's submitted is perfectly within our purview, I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like, uh, I guess we have to at least technically make a voice vote. Um, so we're, uh, I, I, I feel like I've heard a motion to support the Efficiency and Regional Grant application for the Human Resources Administrator. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, boy, there's a lot of these. Whether to submit an application for the District Local Technical Assistance Program to the FERC and uh, that's usually one where we've got a few things we might consider and we've got to pick. That is, yeah. yeah. As I recall, what we need, what we were thinking about for this round is just a phase two of the economic development piece that happened, the, the, the charrette that we did, when was it, in the spring of last year? Because it was, it was, it, there was only money for, for the half-baked cake. Am I wrong? I, mean, I it, think we, phase two was, was the was the planning sure. Yeah. Really? But they kind of combined them together. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't a follow up. I don't Maybe know. not. I, I, I may be so. remissing my memory, but yeah. I guess the the one I like to submit here it comes to mind. It's it's not really spelled out, but other than uh, other planning project is. A, uh, an effort to, to coordinate with all interested parties on what can be done to improve the intersection of Christian Lane and State Road. Uh, I'm suggesting that FERCOG do a, at least the first year a coordination effort with all parties involved and see what the problem is, uh, what are options for funding and what, what can be done because that that intersection is was number one on their last survey of most hazardous intersections in the county uh, and that survey is being updated I don't know where that intersection stands on an updated survey but it's in the last 15 years it's ranged from number one to number 15 or something and I think since it's been number one lately I guess I'd like to initiate a study to see what can be done and get people involved to thinking about it. And you can see something needs to be done on at least the one corner where trailers from Yankee Candle or others are having difficulty and there's accidents, accidents supported. It's number one because of accidents. And we've had two this past year from our town investigated too. I don't know what state police has done, but. Uh, it's anywhere from 7 to 12 over a they go two year period of study so two years of accident data to look at so they're about to come out with one that goes from years 14 15 and maybe 16 but we've got some recent data I, I, I guess I, I feel now is the time to do something if we're going to do something with that intersection because it's been on the top of the list uh, it not only involves the state, it's on a state highway, so going to involve the state, probably environmental people, because you've got the wetlands issues there. And I hear there's problems on Christian Lane with that culvert, whatever, that goes uh, underneath the road behind castaways to that drainage. So, you know, it's a benefit to the town on Christian Lane to, to do something as well. Uh, Great, I'm not sure it's a bad idea. That being said, these grants are typically about 2,500 bucks. Yeah. What you're talking about is pretty big money. Well, no, I'm just right now a, a coordination effort to get parties involved into thinking about it. Yeah, the, the project itself is gonna be big. We're two, three, four years away before you probably do anything. But to get people interested and coordinated and, and to know that we're, we're focused on that intersection. 
Otherwise, it's just going to pass do, by. Do $2,500 worth of whatever you would need to start. Coordination yeah. effort, mostly by FERCOG. FERCOG has got the accident data that says it's number one on, or has been number one on the list. So let's let's do something. I mean, now is the time. If it drops off the list or whatever, then then I guess we lose our emphasis. I'm just looking to see what section, what what Well, it would be under plan, other planning project. Well, I could figure on page four, the top of page four. It doesn't fall really on anything else. Yeah, I was just looking. I don't see it. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't. Uh, but you got regional. No, no, it's not a regional study, but. I mean, it could be a simple thing as looking at the uh, speed limits on State Road, I mean. But until we raise the issue that something needs to be done, no, nothing no. will happen. Yeah. Hmm? If we don't raise the issue. Right, nobody else will. No, no one will. And, and it's, even, it's, it. it's even that I wasn't aware of this, the uh, complete streets meetings identified it as a temporary bus stop for, uh, I don't know what, Front, I mean, Franklin County or, or Hampshire County, it's a temporary bus stop there as well. Now, is that contributing to, to making it hazardous intersection? Should there be a bus pullout stop there? Bus pullout lane. Oh, you know what? This does fall, fall under ensure safe infrastructure through improved visibility. Assess That's intersections right. for visibility obstructions like overgrown vegetation, assess sign of reflectivity okay. and pavement markings throughout the town and provide bylaw templates for, for a, bu a butter maintenance such as tree. I mean, it's kind of, Kind of fits there, but the top of page three. Page three. Oh, it's it's not a, an awful. Yeah. It says intersections, visibility, yeah, obstructions, overgrown. Yeah, that applies. Do they give us one, or do, you, do we apply for more than one? How you need to rank them. It says. Rank them. Yeah. Um, Some of these are not. The top three to five, they say. When does this do? Twenty fifth. So before our next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, still, to me, I, I don't care if it goes as that or if it's written as an other, uh, yeah. if we want to be more. I, I'm just being, I think what, that's, what makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one that caught my eye on the list was the regional marijuana assistance. And I don't know whether to click all three boxes. There's one about public education and outreach, uh, zoning for retail sales and or cultivation. I sort of feel like that, our planning, uh, board is already taken care right, of. Some of that, and then yeah. development of local board of health regulations or other policies to prevent youth use. Um, like the first and the third are things that we know we have to work on and we may have the funds to do the actual work, but figuring out what to do when we want input from lots of places. That, that, that was one that caught my eye. But I also like Fred's idea what, I, as yeah. well. Because I think that's another thing that we really could use some assistance on. But I agree with what you're saying, Joyce. But I think maybe that's a year or two away. Once we get these marijuana places going and we get money into them, maybe um, look page at that. three. Maybe to look at it then, rather than. Well, this would be something that happens this year, and, and well, just can. But it, because I, it, I'd like to do that proactively. Uh, um, okay. Like our, our board of health, I don't know that if they're looking at. Uh, what kind of regulations they should have, but I, meant, I imagine they would, they could use some help um, on that sort of thing. I think one of the things that has helped us is that our planning board was so proactive. I mean, they got out there like within 24 hours of that uh, information coming down, and they were already writing what our new bylaws should be, and they got they they kept to that timeline and they got it into town meeting, which you know bowled everybody over, right? That we we actually got that, and I think that's that's why we're getting things done in a controlled way in other places that weren't so on the ball, yeah. we're not. And I sort of feel like the our, our Board of Health, and because you know once this comes in, we don't want to wait until, like if something, uh, which some people might look at as an abuse, could happen, and if that doesn't go checked, you know, it doesn't get checked quickly, it could become sort of, oh, well, that's what we've always done. And that's harder to stop it. So I, I sort of feel like technical assistance on that earlier rather than later is a, is a good idea. But we should we can so we can just prioritize. Yeah, I mean three, the, uh, three things. I, I would I would throw an open space and recreation plan update. Um, but I, I you know guys I, I I think these things are such little money. I don't think it impacts anything. Whatever you guys want, I I, I just have so little faith in. 
Well, it's, it's let, never done anything. Let me propose I'll put a one in this box here um, with the intersection of Christian intersection. Lane. Okay. Um, put uh, two in the box with especially the develop uh, Board of Health regulations. Yeah. And then do do the open space uh, and recreation open space plan. As third, we don't have to rank any more than three. Does that? I mean, it seems. Do you want Board of Health or Education? Well, I'm going to check both boxes. Both, but, yeah. I would think you're education um, proactive. Right, because there I think the schools are already interested and they're reaching out to us on that as well right now. So we can reach back with some money at some point too. And we, we should get some money back. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was, uh, was OSRP the, the number three? Uh, yes. There yeah. was an update or update? A new update with OSR. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then there were some regional, regional projects. projects as well. It didn't look quite as closely as those with this. Hey, human resources number. management. But why don't we just stick with the, the three so we don't run the risk of having a four or a five? Oh, because the, the, the three that they we ask picked, us to rank three regional. these are for planning projects. And then there's a separate category of regional oh, projects I apologize. that you also pick three to five out of uh, shared services. And then we, should we already share most of these services. I actually think that the aging dementia friendly region is, is not a bad one. I think you know we are we are such a rapidly aging series of communities, yeah. um, and I think that we're going to hit a wall at some point, and, and we're not going to know how to handle the number of people that are starting to see age-related dementia, and they may not have a support structure um, or yeah. housing or housing or anything. It just and and we're not going to and and I'm and I'm sure that the. the the, the senior center would probably get involved with us on that. I mean, the, the senior center has outreach at some level, but it's limited to dollars. Yeah. So I, I think that's probably a pretty good one because of the age and society that we have. Yeah. Okay. Doing Brian with the uh, this one regionalized municipal IT networks. What are we doing for IT? Are we are we upgrading here or? Um, we had some discussion a while ago. Yeah, there were, I don't know where that's at right now. We had Frocog hired. Um, I can't recall the name of the IT North company. East. Was it? Was it Northeast IT? It was Northeast IT, and they did a they did a. I think the sixth IT assessment that we've had done, um, but I haven't seen the report from that. How long ago was that? They were Two in weeks. here long. How yeah, long? that was Two weeks. Three weeks. But it was something. Oh, was that all? So it was recent. Yeah. yeah. But I, you were talking to these IT months ago. Long, the years ago. Well, no, but a year ago. Yeah. Well, what happened? With Northeast IT. Yeah. Um, they never did a formal IT assessment. They did. No. Um, Are they remiss in getting back to us? Um, nope. Um, who? Somebody did the formal IT. Somebody different did the formal IT assessment. Because I know the their owner very well. Grant. I can call their owner if you have any problems. He, he, I know him very well. Yeah. Um, it was. Was it Joel Mollison? He's the owner. No. It, it wasn't Joel O'Brien. No. Um, Rudder. Rudder did the Rudder, uh, Rudder Technologies or Integrated Technologies did the IT assessment. And that's what led to the um, the consolidation of the emails. Um, the new we have a new uh, firewall, new router that replaced the Best Buy Special of the Week that we had. Um, okay. One of the things that I'm interested in in this regional IT process that's happening is there seems to be a need for or there could be an opportunity for shared backup, um, off-site storage backup, because uh, mm. um, a lot of towns don't have that yeah. under control. So. Well, but that's also 
interestingly, specifically listed in the in the in the check boxes of explore feasibility or continue work to establish new shared services. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's one of the things maybe we don't share. New information technology. Ones. Yeah. I mean, we had a con we, you know, years ago we had a conversation about sharing police, and it oh, hit yeah. a, a brick wall. Is an understatement, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately. Yep, yeah, that would that would be helpful to if we could have a yeah. server farm somewhere where everybody could back up to. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay, I see backup. On your well, way. you want to make that number one? Yeah, let's make that number one. But my guess is we can check more than. Right, it's, uh, we just rank them. Uh, they would like you to do at least three up to five. Um, but, 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 but we need to check which of the oh. shared services within oh. the one. I put information technology and I circled the word backup. Because that's our, not that we're not interested in all of them, but that one yeah. okay. specifically is a problem that all our local towns have. I wonder whether facilities management of municipal buildings and grounds is another one personally, but it's a void. We that's a void we have right now. Oh, it's yeah. a huge void we have, and we don't have the skill set. I'm hearing yeah. rumblings of conversations that are taking place, and I'm thinking the people who are being right. earmarked for this, right. I, it might as well be me with the amount of knowledge that we. I mean, right. So it yeah, that's the kind of thing where in this in the regional school system there is a facilities manager. But for our town, By time. yeah, time. yeah. But for our town buildings, we don't really have a right. facilities manager. No. Okay, I check that, and then and is number two. Then yeah, I don't think you. Well, I think you can rank this as one, and then check whichever boxes are. Oh, okay. I also think the last one is going to be going to be relevant. Really? Really? Zosha compliance officer. Yeah. I thought Bosha didn't have any teeth anymore. Well, it. It doesn't, but it's, there was a law change that says OSHA and Massachusetts have been pretty much on the same level. Uh -huh. um, but there was a law change, uh, was it last year, where OSHA's, OSHA standards are going to replace the Massachusetts standards. So at some point over the next couple of months, we're going to have to do some, we'll start with probably checklist audits of our. Uh, facilities and to make sure that that we're compliant because um, uh, the small things I could tell you that we're, we're not doing right now we don't have our I shouldn't I shouldn't yeah. I shouldn't say anything on camera. yeah let's keep that let's um, have that conversation but, offline but um, there are things that we could improve on it okay um, at, at the risk of um, how do I put this delicately without getting a phone call when I get home? Um, no, please. <laughs> you could spell it. <laughs> Write it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm still looking at this. These explore feasibility or continue to work to establish new shared services. Um, I, I think that at some point we're going to need to have a conversation about sharing fire services. We're all getting old. At some point, yeah. Well, We're all getting old. Yeah. Is it not not next year, but we're all getting old. Okay. I think fire would be easier than police. Well, I, I agree, especially because oh. fire right now isn't a full-time kind of thing. And John does a, an amazing job. So that's why I'm saying it's not, I'm not sure there's yeah. an immediate need, but although there... There may not be an act of Congress left that you can pass to keep him on as the fire chief. Right. So, but but I, I I think he has enough support for firefighters to keep it going in Whiteley. As whether he's chief or not, I, I think he's got a good number. I'm um, saying 10, 15, maybe even more people that are willing to support and fight fires. So it's not yeah. like yeah. You know, fire but comes and you got three people show up. Where do they work? Well, how old are they? I, no, some are fairly young. There are some young. There's some young. Right, but where do they work? Well, I don't know. Some work for Keith. Yeah, yeah. Again, these are, that, yeah. these are questions that these are questions that I'm not saying that. Again, this isn't about making a change. This is about fact finding. Yeah, yeah. The firefighter uh, recruitment and retention is a, is a big issue 
for volunteer departments. Huge. You're right. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. I don't know. I, is that well, true in it's, small towns? Or I, it's, 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 it's even, even put it's the, even put the check mark more true there. for small towns. Oh, yeah. uh, it might be that it's not true for us this year, but. But, but we're, uh, you know, let's not get down covered down our pants down either. Right, yeah. But don't they have some kind of firewoods district or association or something that does that get involved in this kind of activity? What does that do? All right, so that's one. What's two? Okay. I would like to do. Uh, support local substance abuse prevention policies for young people. You don't think that's covered under our marijuana thing? Or under well, the most agreements? That's, no, no, because that's a very local, this is a regional uh, effort. Um, and the, the thing that, that made me um, look at this one more closely was um, uh, include municipal policy projects and specific strategies to support parents in talking with their children about legal marijuana. Because I mean, I, I can have that talk with my kids because they're 20 something. Um, I'm not sure how I would have talked to them about it when they were younger. Um, and I think that's, you know, if there's, if some part of this can be, you know, you know, regionally having some, I don't know what, I don't know what form it would take. That's, I think, something that other people might know how to do better. But, you know, if, if, if I were a parent and I heard, you know, we're having a regional meeting with an expert from, some place to talk about uh, what are good ways to talk to your kids about marijuana. That would be a great service for parents at this particular time. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be just in Waitley because these are regional projects, so presumably that would be uh, all over Franklin County. So you want to make that two and make dementia three? Um, yeah, the number I don't care if it's number, if the, the right. substance abuse comes as three and dementia yeah. comes first. I don't I care. Dementia, I, I go dementia number two. Yeah. And if you want yeah. low substance abuse number three, okay. Okay. And then community compact projects, do we need to? Yeah, I don't think so. No. Yeah, I don't think we have. Okay. So you got all those? I did. So we're assuming you didn't hear from anybody else then? Anyway. Well, I have not. I know the planning board meets Tuesday. I have heard one thing from the, from the planning board. It wasn't related to the LTA, but they were seeking assistance from FERCOG in relation to rezoning of historical municipal buildings. So thinking about the Blue School and the Center School as to how we might enable yeah. future use of the overlay districts. I haven't heard anything back from that. Okay. All right, we have three more items and like three more minutes. We'll be good. Um, do we want to reply to a letter the Waitley School Committee uh, sent regarding urban grown marijuana establishment? Um, and I think we all have copies of the letter. Yep. I, I, I think the letter is a clear indication that they're not aware of the efforts that we've already put forth in our host agreements on education. Um, right. The schools are rightfully interested in making sure that there's an information and education component for our school-aged children. And we've covered this in the host community, in the host community agreement. Yeah. I, I just think that the letter can easily say thanks for your 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 your, your uh -huh. con voicing your concern and please know that we have thought this through already and we agree with you and that's why we are requiring each company who comes to Waitley to pay us significant money for the very education initiatives that you're requesting and, and, and voicing a need for. I, I think yeah, and, and I think it, it might be the time to, well, I, I would avoid snarky things like, well, go look at www.fcap.tv for yeah, the no, meetings I, where we discuss it, so we can probably avoid that. But um, the, invite them to be a partner in that, in spending that education money. A partner? Yeah. 
Yeah, ask them, you know, say, you know, we are not educators. Um, Nor do we have but, a connection yes, to and we, kids, so. and we don't know exactly when to expect the money, but presumably sometime in the coming year is when that would start coming in as these places actually open. Um, uh, so if we can be suitably vague about when money would actually come, yeah. um, we can let them know roughly what we're, you know, what we've asked for and uh, start planning kids is, I guess, is the, the, the other message I put with that and, but, you know, Okay. Uh, let's I, have shovel-ready ideas. Let's have some shovel-ready ideas for when this money comes in. Yeah. But the way I read this, they're asking for, if there's issues with, with that grower or that business, who do they contact? That's what they're asking for. If they get an order during recess or the kids are out there, what do they do? The building inspector. So I would or, the, or, the, or the Board of Health. I would propose uh, that they call that's yeah, I think um, Brian should be. And then Brian can deal. As a first. Okay. I think if teachers have an issue, they should tell the principal. However they want to work, but that's what yeah. I recommend. They would tell the principal, and the principal could contact me, and I'll relay the information right. to the building inspector. But I also think that there should be an education component to this for staff at the school of what this odor actually is. I mean, we don't want people to walk out of the school and have something smell something that they don't. And because it's not, I don't think sewer the odor gas. is like sewer gas. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the odor is your typical what you smell coming out of the men's room in high school. I think it's a different, more pungent smell. And so more rules are no detectable odor. Right, they'll get shut down if there's a detectable odor. Right. Well, and if I know the other aspect of this. I think I copied you folks on this. The farm bill just passed, and they've now legalized hemp as an agricultural yeah. product. Exact same product, just THC free. Right. So they can plant it right up to the school's border, and the odor's there. So it's just and the odor's there. Same odor. Same. And the exact flowers. same plant. It's just THC free, and they use it for the uh, the oils. And that's outside. That's not even in. That's outside. There'll be there, there'll be some indoor, but most of it's. They already did three acres at full bloom last year. Right. And and now it's been legal. I just got signed uh, by the president. Yeah, but that's not one that has the does not the same regulations as the. Has no, no right. right. It's so, agricultural. Right. Right. So it doesn't have the scrubbers or all that kind of stuff that's going to have with these. So right. they they're going to get shut down if there's a detectable odor. Right. So just have him call Brian and Brian can yeah. deal. So it sounds like like there's the outline of the letter. I, I would at least want to know that yeah. there's something the, going to the building The other yeah. thing, the decisions were made by CBA. Brian, did the town, as in a butter, receive the information on what decisions were made? For the CBA? Yes. The, the notice of decision is filed with the town clerk. Right, but I received the notice today as an abutter of what decisions were made. And one of their school committee's concerns was, you know, they weren't notified early in the process because the town is the abutter and not the school committee. Yep. And now if the town got that notice, is that, is that going to the, to the school committee? It can. It should, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can send it to yeah, this is... Notice of decision, right? Yeah, notice of decision. See, that's that's my copy of today's, today's mail. Did it, did it, is that all it was? Yes. Did it include the, did it include the conditions or anything? Uh, is it not just a front, detail. Is just a front page? I would, I would assume the town got that since you're in the butter to it, right? Well, you haven't seen it yet, but. Well, the file with the town clerk, it wouldn't. Right. They wouldn't otherwise be distributed. But the school was the asking school. before about to keep informed, I guess, of that. So. Yeah, I'd almost want to send them the the entire decision. Yeah. Because this doesn't include any no. of the conditions or anything that. Yeah. That won't close on it. Okay. Okay. We, could, we could close that with the letter too. Okay. So just as a point of clarification, 
just to get back to the odor issue, um, detectable odor. Is that defined? Do we need to get something from town council? Because you're not going to be shutting down companies without retribution coming back. Yeah. 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 So, what does it mean? What does detectable odor mean? And who determines that? And I don't know all those things. But if you're going to shut someone down <laughs> over a bylaw, wow. There's not good ways to. Well, that's why I'm also saying let's make sure they know what the stuff smells like. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it, it's only a snapshot in time where there's going to be an odor when they're flowering. Yeah. Yeah, if somebody could just well, like spread manure that same day. Well, that, that could be three or four months, period. No, three to five weeks. Yeah. Well, okay, three to five week period. Okay, so. But, uh, but, it, but one, one time, maybe twice a year. So it's. A year, yeah. You know. It, well, we've got to manage this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you'll draft a letter? Yeah. You okay. sign it? Yeah. All right. Um, all right, two more items before we get to town administrative updates. Uh, discuss Complete Streets Grant Award to remove the sidewalks on Chestnut Plain Road. Yeah. So awesome. Thanks to the work of the Complete Streets Committee. Um, and myself, Joyce, and Keith, we submitted a tier three grant application for, what was there, eight or nine different projects. Uh, the biggest one being the reconstruction of sidewalks along Chestnut Plain Road from the center school um, on that side and the cemetery on the other side up to, I think it's the, or, Town Hall or Haydenville Road around that area. Yeah. And that part of the grant application was awarded um, to the town in the amount of uh, just about $210,000 um, <coughs> to reconstruct the sidewalks. Why doesn't it go all the way to the church? Um, well, because we had a limit on, um, I believe it was we had a limit on the, the cost, the total project cost we could apply for. We couldn't do. We couldn't afford to put in both sections. Okay, that's on the was like uh, the, the second year priority. But I think the crossing is down by the church in there. There is a crossing in the part that's down by the church. Is there? No, okay. included in that one. So I think. it includes the crossings. It includes sidewalks, um, ADA compliant ramps on the sidewalks and crosswalks um, yeah. on Chestnut Plain Road. Well, how much did we apply for? What did we get? We didn't get everything. We we didn't, no, we did not. We applied. It, it was three hundred. Three hundred something thousand. Three hundred something thousand. Uh, they only they only funded the, the the big project. And the sidewalks stay in the same spot, correct? Um, no, no, I don't think so. Oh, they don't. They're yes. not. They're not set back way back. They're not as set back as. Far There's as no as design. Well. We're not. We were not required to submit a design, um, and this money won't pay for design. But if we are moving the location of the sidewalks, does the money also include landscaping to eliminate the current sidewalks? Uh, I'd have to see how it was. How it, we because that would not, be, we don't want parallel sidewalks. We didn't need to be one that working specific. and one not. We didn't need to be that specific. Yeah, I guess we weren't required to be so specific. About right. It. But I, I think that we need some more uh, community involvement on where the sidewalks should be. Yeah. I mean, there's there's. There's studies saying put them in the middle where there's no trees and whatever, uh, but who's going to, just think about it, who's going to walk in, in the middle of uh, the grassy area uh, for security and other purposes, and, and how does that affect the driveways? I mean, you can't have a driveway on a slope with a sidewalk going through it. Uh, right. So we need that now. Well, depending on the location on the driveways you have it, and, and the other the other part is the veterans are proposing changes to, at the veterans memorial there. And where's the sidewalk going to go around there in the back, in the front, on the sides? Well, I that's why I'm know. saying is are they going to uh, just stay where they currently are? I, I think I, I think those are a nice I, location. There needs yeah. to be a lot of coordination. In, but, but I think there needs to be coordination right. meeting mm -hmm. and, and invite the neighbors specifically. They're the ones that are going to see it and use it every day. Uh, yeah. Not so much me. I, I, I think I that mean, makes but, sense. And what does it look like? And who's going to maintain it? Well, but, the maintenance is the yeah. It's no time. Yeah. Who owns that land now? The town. The town. 
It's on yeah. town property. Uh, and the problem's going to be the roads. Well, you know, well, well, that, the that and going around the monument and Waitley Inn. Which side do you go, Waitley Inn? What do you do in yeah, front of Waitley Inn? I mean, I don't know. You don't necessarily need a sidewalk in front. I mean, well, it's driveway, and and well, there is there is an indication that it continues in front of Waitley Inn in one of these studies. Yeah, yeah, pretty compliance. So, so yeah, I when the sidewalk it, comes into the driveway, it still yeah. needs to maintain ADA compliance. Right. It can't but, be too slow. Um, yeah. But before we ask Keith to do a design on on. Uh, on it where, where the location he thinks is acceptable, I, I think we should have a community meeting to see where exactly the location should be, what people want. Can and the material, whether you want asphalt or concrete. I mean, it's a lot easier to maintain asphalt. You can patch and change grade, whatever. Concrete, yeah. you're kind of kind of stuck with what's yeah. out here. Okay, and well, she's going to figure yeah. out a lot we of could, that, too. I think we could, could we then, like, ask Keith to to call center meeting, yeah, as he as he plans. I mean, what's the next step? I guess uh, besides, the, I mean, is Keith really the next step for designing? Um, or is well, well, once we get a notice to proceed, then oh, okay, which we should, which we should get shortly after we get these contracts signed, then we'd be design would be the next step. Okay. And, and maybe that's when the community meeting, it makes the most sense. Maybe a scoop article for the March issue. I, I guess I, I volunteer to help Ryan if you just coordinate a meeting on that if you want. If you guys want the select board to be involved. Well, I think, we should well, I think I want the, the people, right. I think you're, you're absolutely right. You want the people there yeah. who are, are going to be living with this to right. have their input. Right. right. And now's the time to do it. I, I gotta yeah. say, I'll volunteer right. to just initiate a meeting to coordinate it, and then right. we'll see yeah. what happens after that. If you, but it might be a, me a meeting where, like, if it were held tomorrow, I don't know if we'd have the expertise to answer their questions. But well, at least but, the first yeah. an open session on what we people's almost, thoughts are. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we almost might really see an engineer first. Water yeah. issue in this. No, that's, well, that's know, kind of different. We're meeting tomorrow to talk further on that. But I know, uh, I know that, but what I'm throwing out there is you're digging up turf. They're not really, no, they're not adding new water lines. A few hydrants, maybe, here and there, but. They're not connecting anything? That's all going to be done at the uh, cemetery with a new pump station in, in that triangle area in front of the cemetery. No, there's no new lines going through town on that. It's not being proposed. Um, the other element to this, though, is to make Waitley, to, you know, Complete Streets is, is all about the residents, but it's also about making for a more community atmosphere. So it's supposed to also invite other people to actually utilize the downtown. And I think that the sidewalk discussion has to also think about what our vision, our long-term vision is for the downtown. The center school, you know, the you know, it's 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 how does it best get connected and work well with the local citizens. But if we don't think about Waitley, in, you know, what happened and the impact of does the center school become a more marketable building? with X, Y, or Z pieces to the sidewalk, I think we're, we're missing a, a vision mark here. Yep. Well, that, yeah, that could be an element to look at. Any other thing is, is, is parking downtown. Where can we put more parking? I mean, there's been suggestions of putting it behind a library, other locations, but nothing has happened. I mean, is that still viable? And you need some kind of connection between there and, and town hall or or a church or whatever, I guess uh, that's tied to it as well. And make sure the sidewalks aren't so close to the road that people are parking on the sidewalks like they do for the parades and et cetera, et cetera. So, and, okay. And yeah. the, the one thing I, I noticed, and I mentioned it to the veterans, is if you don't put some kind of barrier around a new monument, 
right now people drive right up to the monument yeah they park right up there so if you especially if you're going to move it back towards more towards the sidewalk you got more room for people to park on the lawn in the front <laughs> i mean you got to do something there either either uh, curbing or put the benches there or, or landscaping or something or put a meter and make some money yeah i, I mean people are going to park wherever there's open land they can land right. okay all right okay so it sounds like we're, we're probably not quite ready for the public meeting but we want one once we maybe start engaging engineer and have a, a good forum for input not really and it wouldn't have to strictly be on just that sidewalk though that'd be an important thing but to kind of touch on the broader uh, who's driving for that area who's yeah. driving yeah okay uh, no seriously who's, who's driving the next steps on this the next steps um, it'll be Keith and I okay um, and if Fred wants to participate yeah, as well um, the we have the funding we need to spend the funding by uh, June 30th 2020 so we have about a year yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. only only one full construction cycle cycle yeah well still to do it this this fall yeah, yeah. summer fall or even next spring but the spring's tight it's tight okay it's okay Thanks. all right so uh the fiscal year 2020 budget planning uh discussion yep my understanding is we don't have a budget <laughs> to discuss no not yet but it's more so the process I, more uh, the process how we went last year and how we might want to proceed this year yep um so i guess the first question was I, I assume the joint meetings with the, we can talk about the finance committee like they're not even here. Yes, you can. Um, sure reason I, I assume the joint meetings were, uh, were were positive and worked well for everybody. Absolutely, uh, sure. Yeah, I, except for the one with the, where, where the, the schools came, but other than that, all those meetings were great. Yeah. Yeah. That'll change. It'll be different this year. I think that'll be different this year. Yeah. That was a long meeting. That was the schedules are tough. That's the challenge. The schedule is tough, and, and I like that it was it was opposite of our board of selectmen meeting. So just like every Wednesday, I know I've got a thing. Right. It's even my well, meeting, your meeting. Tues Tuesdays, right? Unless we're on. Tuesdays and stagger. Yeah. Oh. Stagger the meetings. Is that oh, okay. What we'll do? Oh, okay. Then I I have to be careful to know which days yes. have Tuesday meetings and which days Wednesdays. But, uh, but yeah, having having it be uh, staggered by week was really nice. Wednesdays are very hard for me. Opp opposite these meetings, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then these guys yeah. were Tuesdays. Um, we so already have dates. Yep, we have <gasps> dates. I don't know. If are they negotiable? I don't know if the first one needed to be joint. The first one probably doesn't need to be a joint meeting. The first one is not enough. Um, um, we had tentative with the school committee, right? We said February 26th. So that's the challenge, Paul. I mean, the, the, the dates ideally are made in unison. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But they are Tuesdays, though. Yep. They are Tuesdays. It's not, not Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. So you're saying the 26th is a meeting that... Oh, the 29th is the first one of... The, the first official meeting of the Finance Committee, January 29th. But it, that doesn't sound like it needs to be a joint one. No, probably yeah. not. 12th of February is the first joint meeting. Probably. Is that good? I'm going right on my calendar. I'll put it back to back with select. Bring a birthday right. cake for uh, that good? for Abe. Yes, Abe, it's mistake. Abraham Lincoln's birthday apparently. Okay. Uh, and in your meetings, I'm, you hold them at six as well, right or seven? No, actually we're five. Five now. Five. You're five o'clock in the afternoon. Poor Qua. Mm -hmm. I that was the consensus around the table. Get it done early. We you want to go to six? Um I don't know yet if I teach on Tuesdays or Thursdays, but that class is from four we to could five. Do your, the, the joint meeting. We could you know, the meeting that's just the finance committee, we could keep those at five and for the joint meetings. So, like, if we were to join late, it would not be. Uh, I, I think the joint meeting need to be six o'clock. 
for my skin. I mean, yeah, I, I, have, a, that. I have a problem both in days because I have assessors meetings at 6.30. You go up. Assessors meetings at 6.30. Five o'clock would work better for me, um, but, or seven. Not at, not, at, not at six, if it wouldn't be seven, maybe I could when, do it. When did the assessors meet? The second and last Tuesday is it, is of the month, so. Absolutely, it. well, I mean, it would be great if all three of you came to all the meetings, but you guys want to split the meetings up, and I mean, we could continuity right. on paper and in black See, and white. But, but this, is, this is what I'm struggling with, that, that this is supposed to be a joint meeting between the entire finance committee, the entire board, yeah, no, no, no. and yeah. and it's happened. And my, I, I don't want to feel like I'm feeling like it's more a finance committee meeting that the board of select, where the select board is invited to. And who, if you can make it, wonderful. If you can't, oh, so be it. Yeah. That's not a joint meeting. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, five will be yeah. hard, but I might be able to make five o'clock. There's a meeting next week where we're deciding who teaches the, the Thursday afternoon section and who teaches the Tuesday afternoon section. I could ask for the Thursday, and that would help clear up Tuesdays. Um, but so I wouldn't know for sure until that meeting takes place. Well, we can. Yeah. We'll have okay. we'll have the first meeting. We'll be just the finance committee. We'll talk about the yeah the time to start changes moving forward and uh, okay and that way there we can hopefully get everybody in Fred okay. assesses yeah. so how this, important can that be no we have to meet the sign <laughs> stuff <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. so, so, uh, <laughs> so the so the second and last Tuesday doesn't work for you Right, no, you're saying well, at six. You, no, not really. Well, that's a half hour, but I don't see that happening. The so. assessors, well, you guys need like what, six and a half minutes for you? No, no, no. It depends for some people. <laughs> Sometimes people show up. Uh, if it was at seven, I could, you know, we could get by with maybe a half hour assessors meeting, but. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, at seven yeah. or earlier, or five, five, yeah. five thirty maybe, if you think an hour meeting. Or we could go to the first and th first and third Tuesdays, maybe. Who we'll said that again? Or we could do the first and third Tuesdays, right? That would be opposite your assessors. Yes, yeah, that's right. Maybe the fifth, the nineteenth, okay. and yeah. But we can yeah. okay. talk about that. Just capture what they need. Yes, that's it. Right. And then we'll when talk we get about there, we'll kick okay. it around and try to make this work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, don't we also meet the second and fourth Wednesdays? Second and last. Second and last. Oh, because then that would, that's not opposite weeks. That's like two meetings in one week yeah. instead of everything. Yeah, the way it is, the way it would be. Yeah. yeah it would be. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, okay. So that's, we don't have the final word on that, I guess. Okay. Um, so Fred and I have been having a lot of discussions. He's, he's the Represent, select board representative to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Yeah. And we've heard this from the Finance Committee as well that that it doesn't make people comfortable that the CIPC meets once a year for an hour, uh, uh -huh. ranks projects, and then goes home. Um, so we've made a conscious effort this year to, to make sure we have more people as part of the committee. And we're going to be having multiple meetings. And we met. Last week, Fred? We met last week. No, we met on Monday. Monday um, and we have our capital projects that were submitted. And we're actually going to go out and have site visits at each of the each of the uh, the buildings or facilities. And um, just at this point, just walk through them, uh, talk to the department heads there, see what they're requesting, um, and we'll continue that process. Um, for projects beyond those projects that aren't requesting money beyond fiscal year but that are requesting money in future fiscal years we want to talk about doing a more in-depth study or survey or analysis of, of the long-term building needs um, because sure. to this point there really isn't much what we get for capital projects are 
oh, I think something's about to break, or um, Keith does a pretty good job of staying on top of his equipment, but we don't have a lot for, we don't have a lot of capital projects for our buildings and our facilities. Right. And, um, so it, it'll be good for the for that process to be a little bit. My only challenge with this is that there's a skill set's important, and there isn't necessarily anyone on the capital planning committee that has the skill sets to assess these requests. Well, we we've added uh, Nicholas Jones on there as some. Um, Experience with building yeah. maintenance for, in terms of con con being a contract. Yeah, uh, that's one of the, one of the things we need to decide is can we do it with local people or do we have to hire somebody to do that? Because yeah. uh, Sunderland hired somebody uh, two years ago to do it. Uh, it was a reasonable cost, like thirty thousand dollars or something. It's one of these home inspection guys, I guess, that does building commercial buildings. Uh, Deerfield is looking at hiring that same person to do theirs this coming year as well. So, you know, it may turn out that our site visits aren't that productive and we need somebody more in depth on building construction yeah. that needs to come out and assess it for us. Then, then I guess the recommendation maybe would be for the next year to have a project to do that. Well. If, if, yeah, the, right. if the department heads kind of think that's necessary, that's the other thing. We need to involve the yeah. department heads in this to right. see what they think. Right. So when you think of the difficult buildings in town, essentially it's the Whaley Elementary School. The other buildings, for the most part, I would think a guy like Nicholas should be able to take a look at that and understand what the needs of that building are in conjunction with whomever the department head in that particular place is, but you combine those two factors, your visits, plus the guy from Frontier who's also supposed to have some oversight with the school buildings in this town, is almost a, a three-level view of yeah. what the buildings need. I mean, if it's, if it's getting through that, well, I and mean, we got to go hire somebody. I'm not sure, the, like our police chief, we don't hire our police chief for his knowledge of, well, when is this roof going to yeah, repair? Yeah, he's there. Right? Right? He's, so he's, he's in there. the building providing some information, but, but I think right. he'd be the first one to say, well, I don't know whether we need to do this or that or the other to the folks. Well, the, 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 on it, you know? But so, so I, I don't, like the, 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 the managers of the departments don't necessarily have the expertise to analyze the building until maybe the problem has gotten too far. You know, like, oh, it's leaking. The one the roof's leaking, you, you actually want to kind of be able to inspect it before. No, it. So, so I feel like, like Nicholas is, is a good layer in there. I don't know if, if I count the department heads as a real solid layer in but that. But you have to have them in there because they're in yeah. the building. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying exclude them, but I don't count that as I, I like think a, we, a I safety think backstop. That first step. I think the first year we need to try it ourselves and see how yeah. it works. And if we, we yeah. can't do yeah. it because people argue about what needs to be done or not, or there's no That's consensus, true. then we hire somebody to help us solve all the issues. But A lot of people, and I'm probably in one of them, would argue that some of the big ticket items you don't look at it in terms of is it ready it's on a schedule we know roofs last 20 25 years right. put it on a schedule mm -hmm. we know our computers should last three to four years put it on a schedule and it's it's it, it's not Rocket you know it's, but it's also ahead. not running in town with band-aids and yeah. Yeah. and duct tape but it's not happening today. No, I know it's not. I know it's so, not. So I totally so understand. All this is going in the right direction. Yeah. Yes. And, and so, even, but, but maybe we should look at it's just on a schedule. Yeah. You know, we, we just finished the town hall. I mean, mm -hmm. in 10 years, we're going to paint it again. It's not going to be 30 or 40 years till it's all in scraping and We're going to paint the other money. side of that town hall probably That's less right. than 10 years. Less than 10 years. I, I mean, you still, time. after you spend money, you still got to maintain it. Yeah. Wait, didn't we just paint the back? Oh, no, we tore it off. Tore it off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two thirds were torn off. Okay. okay. So Don't forget that one third. Seventy five hundred of it tore off. Okay. Okay. So, the, so that's it's moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, you know, we have this capital plan template that's been prepared, and it looks out ten years, and 
We don't have any projects on it, but we know there's projects that are going to be coming. supposed to be there. And, and how are you supposed to plan without the highway building? Probably is you know. Conway doesn't have one. Conway, yeah, still. Yeah, their, their, their roads get taken oh, care of. And how much did Deerfield pay for theirs? Yeah, Too much. Yeah. Well, if the building's going to stay, we should put solar on the roof. It's not going to stay. Well, we should. That's an option. That, can I lead into my other? That that okay. that's that leads right into, lead into Fred's idea. Yeah, into my 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 idea here is there. Oh. It, it's time for for the town to look at solar for town town use. I know we, we tried one year ago to go with that firm out of Chicopee that was going to sell us yeah. electricity at a reduced rate. But, you know, I, I see other towns, uh, Deerfield, uh, I mean, Sutherland, even Deerfield is looking at it <coughs> for town much. use. Stop and think how much we spend for electricity over the year. It's probably $30,000 we spend on electricity. And it's not going down. It's going to go up for the water department, for their needs. It's going to go up for the town hall. Considerably You're because there was nothing here before. There, Fred. And, and I think it, it's time to, to go back to our energy committee and have them look at the options for getting uh, solar energy, or, or I should say, so reduced okay. electricity rates for, for the town buildings. And whether that's going with a, with a what, power purchase agreement or we put, we own solar on either town buildings or town property or or whatever, I guess, to, to look at that. And if they can't decide, maybe issue an RFP like some towns have done. Where do we put solar? We've got some vacant land. Uh, I showed Brian a, a listing of what's vacant for possible acreage, possible sites for solar. We've got a lot of buildings you could put solar on. I think it's time we need to seriously look at it. I, I don't think you're going to get an argument out of it. Not getting on yeah, so on that. I mean, I said we should put solar on the police station. When we did the police station, and everyone said I was crazy. No, not 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 me and the rest of the energy committee. But so, everyone, but, but is there solar on the police station roof right now? No. Last no, time I looked, no. Roof. And the town hall, perfect roof. Oh. And the school, the highway garage, perfect roof. We school. always find a perfect reason roof. why something can't happen. And everybody happen comes up. Rather than finding a way to make it happen. Else let's in, let's I'm so happy, Fred, that you are supporting this. Let's involve the energy committee on this. What are they doing? They they've been they've been asking to put solar on every damn building we've ever done something on the roof and been told we don't have the money for it. Well, let's so, get a proposal let's, together. Let's. Well, even I, it's going to cost that. money. So okay. what? I, I guess right. we're going to save in the long run. Fred's on our side. Yes. You know, and, and I raised the same argument, and even, Joyce, you remember five years ago when that first solar farm went in in Whaley, why didn't we sell electricity to Frontier? And I made him a contact to Frontier, and Frontier didn't do anything with it. It's still, it goes to the jail. Five years ago. Five years ago. Years ago. Yeah. But we don't get and to decide who... Well, we, should have, we could have had an input there, but Frontier dropped the ball, I think. Frontier could have spoken up and we could have had I mean, something. I, I wanted to put solar on the old landfill yeah. a dozen years ago. Yeah. yeah. The, because it costs um, money, Fred. What's that's that? the only thing. Well, look, I don't Which know how to landfill? start this. Sorry. Which old landfill? On, on Long Planet? It's, on it's not enough room, though. It's wetland. It's a, no, the it's top, that's just not true. You can put, you can put solar there. You got to go back 400 feet. You can put yeah. solar there. No, is that enough? 400 foot setback. Yeah, 400 foot setback. setback, and then you're into a swamp or a, a pond. Now I forget what they. 400 feet deep. No. Is there anyone who get get money to put on the town garage and then? What's our green communities? Maybe we don't have. We've talked about that, but we all said that the town garage was going to fall down in 10 years. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I think we, I, I assume so we would use the green community. So, how do we, do we start this? Do we, do we, do we ask Brian to send a letter to the Energy Committee to come up with proposals for solar for town use? Will that get the ball rolling? I mean, otherwise I we, we keep talking, but I guess I don't see anything happening. Sure. Right, sure. and ask them to, to respond to us within, I don't know, a month or two, what their findings are. Or, what they propose to do, or they hire somebody, or, or issue an RFP to see <coughs> what proposals we get. So we're one third of the en energy committee here. So we need more people on the energy committee. Well, or at, at the we same do, but but I think you can get, get the other. I think the other people will. 
will respond. I have a feeling like, they would, but we've always been yeah. stonewalled on this. I mean, look, Fred, you're you're the one, you're the you, you can't, you, 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 it sounds like you don't think that we've been talking about this for yeah, but, and, and And we always hear reasons why we can't do something rather than reasons how or ways to accomplish something. We yeah. have talked yeah. about this over and over and over again so you can't sit there and say we no. never talk about this it. it's um, it, this isn't yeah. this isn't a new idea i don't idea think he meant to imply that yeah. yeah well i think you know it really needs to be laid out in such a way that it convinces people yeah. that it's you can't, we can't just assume that everyone is on board no so what are our costs what are our projected costs what are the costs of yeah. putting solar? Yeah. What are the savings? Right. You put that equation together, and if it comes up plus at the end, I think yeah. people are in. Yeah. But you gotta do that. You gotta do that, yeah. And yeah somebody's gotta do that. Yeah. How, many, how many of our buildings have their own electricity meter? Right. All of them. Right. All of them do? Yeah. Our, our two biggest users are the elementary school and the water department. Right, and but and this building has its own electricity meter. Yep. The police department does. Yeah. The library does. Yeah. So, so we all so we get so we get individual electric yeah. bills for each building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who pays those electric bills? Amy. But. <laughs> but that's that's the start. We've got to Some we've got to aggregate. We've got to look at each building. To to, to Paul's point. I could, we could print out a report tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. That'd be impressive if you could. You could. Yeah. Mass Energy Insight is tracked. The electric company has to report it. Can you go back five months. years? We can go back to um, 2000. Yeah, we had. Yeah, we had to go back. We just got to bill this week, sure. probably. Right. Right? We just sent out bills this week, so. It, I don't know the answer to this question, but uh, I guess we, we we could find out. Does it? I mean, there's lease options, there's own options, there's, yeah. we could buy solar from the, from, some from Nexamp or from whoever, yeah. uh, not solar, we could buy electricity, electricity from them. And I don't know, is, is there a benefit to owning the panels I, or leasing them or? Sure, there's a benefit, there's a cost, but there's a benefit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Once, once it's paid off. Long-term cheapest is generally to own them right. yourself. Yeah, um, but you'll have the, but excuse me, tax but credits. you'll have the, Well, that's the problem, you don't get the tax, tax credits. credits. Yeah. But, so without the tax credits, you're probably doubling your, your payback time period. Right. Would that be well, fair, George? I really just feel like I was just overspoken and interrupted. And I, I was about to yeah. say all of that okay. in one whole sentence. Okay, so yes, obviously I agree with that. There's advantages that municipalities can't take advantage of. Um, and that's where sometimes um, the, the long-term benefits of owning sometimes get canceled out from uh, if you have a company who can take advantage of the tax incentives uh, and then they can give you an even better electricity price than they otherwise would give a regular customer. So I just... They, it, 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 yeah, it's not obvious for municipalities that the same answer would be uh, that it would be the same answer as someone who's doing this for their home. For the home, it's you know owning is is absolutely the best way to do it if you've got um, the roof in the right direction and so on, and if you can get that money up front. If you don't have the money up front, next best is to lease. Um, if you can't don't have the roof in the right place, the next best is to buy from somebody on a solar farm. But for municipalities, it might be that third one might actually be the best because you don't have the tax incentives or you can't take advantage of tax incentives. But there's a, there's a new model that some people are working on that has worked for uh, cooperatives and other groups that don't pay taxes um, where they sell the tax incentives to uh, investors who kind of buy those tax incentives and that's how you fund the building of the project to begin with. And that, so that's something that I think the Energy Committee should look into. Because that's, not, I don't know that they've applied that to municipalities, but they've applied it to uh, nonprofits uh, in New York and in Massachusetts. And most of them I know are in east, the eastern half of the state. So it's, so there's, there, there are some other options that hadn't been out there five years ago. 
we had a proposal two years ago yeah um to have solar put up next to the school on the sanderson's property i believe and and we were going to get it didn't go anywhere. and it didn't go anywhere and i'm not sure why but and it was tied directly to the school's electricity demand yeah that, it was behind the meter for them so that basically we got we got credit for all of that energy right it was right. the only way to get it behind the meter for a municipality right right yeah Tritown Beach people are looking at the 10 acre field for solar over to Tritown Beach. Oh. Yeah, that's an, an option on, on our list of, of vacant properties. They're looking at what? It, yeah, I think it's a 10 acre, isn't it? For 10 yeah, acres? it's about 10 acres. Yeah. Who controls that? Tritown Beach. Tritown Beach. Tritown Beach does? Yeah. They it's the property. area south of the other beach area. The beach, area. beach district can be on property. Do they own that land? Yeah. We can't even get a count of how many people <laughs> use Tri Town Beach. Maybe they can put in an electric trigger. We can put solar in, and then we can how, we can hire somebody to, well, to run Tri Town Beach happen. and actually turn it into a place that people want to use. Three phase runs down and then crosses over to the diner, so it has three phase right to the. Right to the field. Yeah. Or is it in a Buck Sanderson's here? Is it? What are they going to do with? Connected to that. What are they going to do with the revenue from the solar? Are they? I don't. I don't know. Motor boats? I have no idea. They're going to dig up. They're going to make it deeper. Die here. Well, I guess uh, that's, yeah. that's maybe an option to go with them. I guess that's what they're proposing here. Okay. Sounds like we are converging on a, an endpoint. Brian, is there anything else under town administrator? Well, I'll just mention a couple things. Okay. Um, it's, going to be, it's going to be deja vu all over, all over again. Um, and we'll talk about this at our next meeting, but the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust is going to be proposing plan changes again. Oh, I'm sorry. So, we're gonna to have to go through the song and dance with uh, the unions and retirees, um, but that's that's just uh, understand that's on our radar. Okay. Um, and we may have more people in attendance that want to talk to us about plan changes and those types of things. What I've what I've heard on a preliminary basis is we're looking at about a five percent increase in health insurance if the plan changes are made. I don't know what it would be if it was the plan changes weren't made, but it would be obviously more than that. Yeah. Is the is the uh, school rep aware of all this? Well, they'll get the. So the first step is the select board needs to needs to vote its intent to make plan changes, and that requires the town to send notice to the union and okay. our retiree representative, who was Bill Smith last week. Let's time. make sure that we get that to them as quickly as possible. Yes. Yeah. They didn't feel like they were included last time around. That we remember. Um, and the other thing is, um, we have the manganese. I'll, I'll need Jonathan to sign this. We have the, the manganese filtration contract with the Dan Chris Builders was the was the low mm -hmm. the low bidder. Uh, we have the contract to sign, so um, they have 180 days to do it. So hopefully that system will be in and will be filtering manganese. Um, there's another long, another long, long story, awaited yeah. project that will hopefully be coming to an end. Um, and in terms of, so, so I think at least the board's aware that the company Tor Verde is proposing a marijuana retail establishment um, at the at the Triple O shops. I don't remember what the address is, but it's the red one. Red one? Four twenty. Red one. Um, so there's the Zoning Board of Appeals is having a special permit hearing for that. That's January thirty first. Um, at six forty. Six six forty. Um, and there'll be the point of board is having its first site plan review session 
um, on the 15th for that project. I think there's a site plan review. The site visit, by, right? By CBA on the 12th. Saturday. It's Saturday the 12th, yeah. Okay. And I don't know, 10 or noon or whatever. It yep. might be on the calendar. So, so if anybody's interested in that, that's yeah. when those things will happen. 31st also has the Franklin County Emergency Communication System yep. thing. I signed up to go to that. Okay. Well, I should say that. Amy signed me up to go to that. Yeah. Could, could I make a request for all these meetings? If rather than just discussing them here, if we could have a system in place where you guys just sent us all meeting meetings that take place through electronic invite, and then we can accept or decline as our schedule permits. Because we just talked about three or four different meetings, and it's just, oh, people can do it. It just would. Yeah. I'll speak personally, it would be a lot easier if I just was sent an invitation that I can ignore or I can accept and then it's on my calendar as opposed to paper. For what types of meetings are you And I, I, I would argue, I would argue, you know, the, 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 the public the, hearings you mean? Public hearings, yeah. site, site views, you know. It's in, but most of the, um, I'd say, I assume most is on our calendar. It's Can, on the Wheatley calendar. Yeah, yeah. Can't you get it right. off of there? That's an extra step. That's an extra step. Yeah. So if I were to open up my calendar here, which has, as you can see, yeah. multiple colors, and I went uh, to this particular week, if he sent me an e bite there'd be a little gray area. Oh, the planning board's having a hearing on, oh, that's right, you told me about I would like to go. And then, uh, of course, I, I'm assuming it's Amy is going to send an e bite right? right? I mean, does somebody put it, is there a master calendar? There's a master calendar on our website. But so there's not a master calendar that lives on a... No, not like on my computer. I don't have a master calendar. There's not like a Google it's just calendar on the website. subscribe to. No. But so you're asking, for, so a planning board meeting that's being held on the 15th, you would want an e bike sent to you. And I can decline or I can accept. I see. And then it would link to your phone right. calendar. It, it links to everything. Right. I know. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, there could be... We could should ask the people to help us with our website, but sometimes they're they'll take a, like a calendar that you keep updating anyway, mm -hmm. um, and they'll make it into a Google Calendar or, or or an iCal that you can subscribe to. Okay. Which would avoid some duplication. Okay. Um, so that that might be something that because uh, you're if you're already putting all these into the website. So I put in the majority of them. So the ZBA site visit, I wasn't aware of that. And that's don't. not really a public meeting. Okay. Yeah, no, so that's not on the calendar. Yeah. So. Um, but so that's the. So that means, that may be something that I would be, or that Fred or Joyce would be interested in because, because where cannabis goes in town is important yeah. to the town. Right, and that's not even something that that I hear about. Th there's no notice that comes to well, I, um, me or Amy. It goes you, to Lynn. You don't know about a ZBA site visit? No. Well, I, 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 think I, I think I, 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 wrong. I thought it was in the newspaper ad. It talked about site visit and but I don't the, see just, the, and the 31st yeah. meeting, ZBA meeting. So I think even with the planning board, so for instance, I found out about a planning board meeting through the recorder the other day. Uh, like I don't, yeah. I, there's uh, some mis. Yeah. There's See, this, a is to this is a flaw in our in our overall system that every every meeting that takes place in town there should be a master calendar. But if it, but if it's getting posted on our town calendar, well, so it's is that the closest of, thing we have? It's a little yeah. yeah, and so sometimes like the planning board will send Lynn a notice of a hearing, so then Lynn will go into the meeting the calendar on our website and schedule the meeting. Which yeah. makes so then it's kind it of bypassed a little bit. So, I mean, I see the calendar. I could right. print it out, but it gets updated. Right. right. See, that that would be the Your beauty of it. If they Your solution, able, right. If they're able to um, uh, make something where you could just subscribe, and it wouldn't just be us. Mm -hmm. You could let it so anybody in the town could subscribe to that calendar so that it shows up or uh, on, on the side. Like, uh, if it's iCal, um, it kind of looks like this. These ones that have little, little lines on it. Um, those are ones like this is Nat's calendar here, and it's a subscription. So um, there's five things on the calendar that I haven't acknowledged, 
yet, but I check it and I can see what items are from that and it, it, uh, whenever I'm connected to the internet, it'll update. But I bet it'll also invite you automatically too. Um, so it's a pop-up. It, it may, yeah, that might, yeah, there might be a setting that I'm doing, but I think with Google, it would always do it as an invite. Now, do we Maybe still have the, the, Google calendar. the other yeah, the social know. calendar, is that still on? Yeah. So there's a meeting calendar and a public event calendar. Public event, okay. Yes, that's what it's those, those two are still the same. Yeah. Can, can we think, think about how we solve this? Because it really, yeah. it'd be real, I miss meetings. And, and, and yes, right, you're right. I could go and look at the weekly calendar, you know, every, every day. But you know what, I work for a living. So I guess it would the main focus it would be you three the main focus for these e bites and I wouldn't be inviting. Of course, everyone. absolutely, okay. absolutely. So that, I think this but, is doable. But yeah, but it could, but it could okay. also. No, we should get it automated. If we can get it automated, right. Such that everything that shows up on either the the events or the, I mean, and, and I'd say open it up to everybody to be able to subscribe to that. More people who can it be on our email site? On our email site, when there's a when there's a meeting coming up, just send us an, an email. Can it? Be done on Well, that's so. what happens with it. You get sent an email, and then it's an invitation via email right. to X, Y, or Z. But the, yeah. the idea would be that there's, once the link puts it into the calendar and posts the meeting for the agenda, that it it's an that, that would be automatically sent, sure. yeah. so that there's not that middle step of right. It, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that would be nice. So we'll yeah, but, but in the interim, nice. but yeah, we should look. We mm -hmm. should ask our our website folks if that okay. if that's. If they have some version yeah. of that that could help us, either sending an email because in the emails you can normally click something and it'll go on the calendar, or um, a lot of places have that you can. There's a little thing next to the calendar where you can subscribe either with Google Calendar, iCal, or I can't remember the other one. Okay, there's usually three options. But Outlook, I mean Outlook. Or Maybe it was Outlook. Yeah. Outlook. yeah, I mean the world uses Outlook. So it would be so helpful because I, I agree. I'm just not going to yeah. count. It just yeah. But I, I just I think but I, I don't want to make it like a whole other layer of your life to be uh, notifying us of meetings. Okay. So we're we'll getting emails you. every time there's a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else? Okay. Um, Is this something we have to sign? Yeah. I mean, okay. Put together this nice card for the friends of town hall to thank them for their gift of the yeah. audio visual. I was looking at this. I think this needs a signature. Are we doing? We're doing this. Did we talk about this already? No, that I just got that today. I haven't even really been able to read through it. But I gave you a copy. Okay. Oh, you so I guess the answer is no. We have. We're not going to do that today. Okay. When is this? When is this due? Did you see? These are for Jonathan. Um, sometime in February, I think I saw. John, these are yours. So we got to initial on the front page, and then. Sign next to George Ann's name on the right initial. Yeah, right there. Somebody already did. George Ann did. Oh, I'm having the water commissioners and the select board both sign it. That that's the contract for Dancris that the board voted to award. Um, we need to. I'm the buy. Buy signature. George Ann. You no, you're right next to her. Is the owner? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know who owns it. Want the water commissioners or the. Um, the blue school closing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. I've said that before, um, mm -hmm. but we need to redo. We need to resign the the deed and the license agreement. Okay. Um, What's the new date for that? Now? You have a date. Um, so, for the first time in this whole process, the three attorneys have been coordinating, and they've done a title search. <laughs> so that's promising. Okay. Um, it's likely going to be. Um, the dates that I saw so far are January 20, uh, the week of January 21st. Could, could we get an updated construction schedule so we can plan if we're going to have a softball field? Yeah, I can ask. Or parking for a softball field is probably more appropriate.
Oh, and you also have, uh, in your packet, you have uh, the letter that Town Council sent to Noble Industrial Supplies. Um, and that product is on return. All right, good. You can pay it down. And then what about this, um, what, did I just say I was gonna do? what about oh. uh, Colonial Power? Oh, that was, yeah. Oh, that, right. I thought that was just a bad That way. came over my email. You know that? Um, we can actually do this offline, but uh, we ask that each community respond to this email by close of this business. So they're trying to get the, a representative from each town together to talk about um, the um, proposed options that they're going to have. What they're going to offer yeah. as, the mean, as, as part of the mean, uh, aggregation. But package. that's not like the meeting where you have to decide in an hour. Right, that's not that meeting. Right. This is just what are we thinking? We already voiced our interest in. I, yeah, I guess I, yeah. I, yeah. I, at first, that, I thought that letter was like we, we have to figure out yeah. how we're going to do this other meeting, but it's like you have to be a meeting. It's, Kind of like a meeting to about, yeah. anyways, that's supposed to Because we were pretty clear, right, Joyce? I mean, to discuss which supply options the community is cleaner at the same price or cheaper at the yeah. same mix. I think they might need to hear that. Email. Okay. I would think. That we can probably do by email. Uh -huh. Right? So, yeah, if we don't, if we don't have anybody that we want to, or if we don't have anybody that wants to go, uh, yeah, they're they're famously daytime meetings, right? So uh, I won't be available. Now I won't be available. Um, and I, Paul is probably not available. I might be available. I mean, who? Knows? Yeah. I just don't know until game day, until yeah. it's set, and until a client's going to take right precedent. Um, so we'll figure out. Yeah. Well, I'll have them set a date, and I'm also I, I could also go to. Yeah. Um, so okay. I think it will be important for them to hear so that we don't get lost in the shuffle as to oh, what our okay. expectations are. Because there's two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen towns okay. that they're trying to hear from. So, and I presumably they want to put them all out as a package. Yeah. So. All right. All right, good morning, this and everything else. That's, that's good. That's good. Fine. To entertain Fine a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.